full of reasons and rage. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a choice big ever mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Just saw the ratings went up, so thank you very much. Heather McMahon is our guest. Very funny stand-up comedian. Has a Netflix special, which I watch in its entirety uh, last night. Normally, I watch the first 10, 15, you know, just to kind of go, I get the flavor. Yeah. I'm, I'm familiar. <laughs> but uh, if I like them, just stayed with it. Watched the whole thing. Wow. Thank you. That means so much. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time, so I'm honored. That's yeah. really nice. A nice an confession. Job. And Thank a, you. an amazing performance. You know, some comedians, it's jokes, but you don't really get the performance yeah. part of it. But you had the jokes and the performance. Thank you. Used and, every inch of that stage. And yeah. I kept, uh, yeah, I kept, I kept watching it going, man, she's so... This stuff is so tight. Like, you you must have really just worked all that stuff within an inch of its life. Well, I am a very, like, physical comedian, too. Like, I really like to give a show, you know? And so, for me, I mean, I did work on it for a long time, but I, uh, (laughs) it's funny. Like, you know, I'm a little exhausted today just running around on East Coast time. But, man, when I'm on stage, I give it to you, you know? And that's just, I, I... I got into comedy because I love Joan Rivers. And so for me, I would watch her all the way up until like right before she passed. And the way that she would command a stage was just, I was always like, I mean, it in her 80s, she had that much energy. So I'm only in my mid 30s, but I'm like, I got to keep it up. You know, whatever she was doing, I need to be on. So, yeah, I always feel like, too, like the worst thing an audience could say is eh, she seemed like a little out of it or, or yeah. not distracted or not yeah. so into it or like a mailing it in. Right. And I, I used to marvel at that a lot with uh, when I did radio mm-hmm. because the way a lot of guests work is the good ones, they just got one speed, one mode, like bring it, bring it, bring it. Others, you could tell they didn't listen to the show and no one they knew listened to the show. This yeah. is why you see celebrities do Australian talk shows and get drunk yeah, because they're like, this is Australia. It ends up on TMZ, but right. they're like, I don't fucking know any people in Perth. I'll say what I want <laughs> and I'll tilt a few before I hit the stage, you know? Right. But I was always like, and it would happen sometimes. You'd have some comedian and you didn't feel like getting up in the morning and he just kind of mailed it in. But I would go, look, you have a microphone and there's nobody in the room, but picture that the microphone is connected to 10 football stadiums and they're all full of people. Absolutely. And they can hear you. So act accordingly. Yeah. T- turn it the fuck on. Right. Yes. I mean, I love a little razzle dazzle. I am also come from like an old theater background. So I like when people come to my show, I like to give them a show. You know, yes. I mean, I love doing shows in clubs and that's always fun to work out new material, but I like a theater show. I like for you to have this like real, I want you to feel shit. I want you to giggle. I want you to be like, did we sing? What happened? You know what I mean? Like I'm giving you a full range of emotions when you come to my comedy shows. Yeah. Now I was studying up on your background. Yeah. There's not much background there. <laughs> it's, it's pretty interesting though. Your yeah. story, your dad was pretty interesting. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. funeral talk. Yeah, there with, was. With dad. But yeah. Your dad was a character or total, am I being too nice. No, no, no. He was the best. My dad was a total character. I mean, I, you know, I say in the special, like my dad looked like uncle, F- the fresh prince of Bel Air, uncle Phil, but white. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was just raised by these two ridiculous people. My mom's was 11 years older than my father. I mean, she's still with us. And um, she's like from the Nath end in Boston. So I was raised by this like real Italian uh, ball busting redhead from Boston. And then I had this like, you know, just like salt of the earth, but really um, hysterical Southern dad. So I'm just kind of like this hodgepodge of just. But is it true? Oh, okay. There's an airline pilot. Yeah. facet of this. Yeah. I'm kind of interested in that story. That was a grandfather thing, right? Yeah. So my grandfather was Captain Jack McMahon and he won a Dedalian safety ward in aviation. He saved a flight. Um, actually, I think he was taking off in San Diego and then made an emergency landing at LAX. So he was a big deal at Delta. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I come from this like great like lineage of pilots and then my dad flew for fun. So, you know, that's a goal of mine to get my pilot's license. But, you know, when do you have the time? It would make my life a lot easier because I'm on the road and I'm like, if I could just hop in a King Air and fly myself to my shows, life would be easier. But yeah. 
Did uh, so? What was the story with your grandfather and the San Diego flight? So um, basically, this flight takes off and the pitch was broken, so it just kept accelerating up, right? Mm-hmm. So essentially, you know, you you won't go as high as you can go, and then everybody just blacks out, and you know, it, it crashes. So um, my grandfather saved the flight, um, and he thought he was going to just ditch it into uh, the Pacific. He's like, that's the safest place to land. Mm-hmm. He was able to make an emerge a, a complete safe emergency landing at LAX and the black box uh, recording is really crazy because I think he says like there's 124 souls on board I need 124 you know medical professionals and ambulances and um, they wrote about it in the Wall Street Journal what year is this oh fuck I don't know approximately uh, uh, I'm gonna guess sometime in the 80s okay but there's a great quote from my grandfather because he said as soon as they had to make the emergency landing at LAX nobody knew what was going on and as they were getting off the plane and some guy was like, you know what? You're a real asshole. Now I'm going to miss my connection to Chicago. And he's <laughs> like, right. you have no idea. We almost died. Wow. So then my grandfather would go in and it was either for, I believe it was for Lockheed. August would, 1977. Oh, 77. Damn. Mm-hmm. So then he would go in and, you know, test and train other pilots like what to do mm. in those situations. Now, I don't want to misspeak in the aviation world. Like, I can't remember exactly what happened, but um, they put a bunch of other pilots in that simulator to test what happened and, and nobody else, everybody else crashed. Wow. So they kind of say like my, my grandfather was like this heroic, uh, m- miraculous pilot. Yeah. And he did say, my papa used to say that he felt the, the hand of God touch him that moment that happened. So, wow. Yeah, he wasn't a real religious guy, but he's like, when that happened, I knew the guy was real. So, yeah, I would have just run to the back, found one of those serving carts with yeah. the mini vodkas in them, and just started back. biting right. the tops off them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> screaming, "We're yeah. all gonna die!" Admit you're gay, and then yeah, 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 I was gay. That's right. Absolutely. If you're oh, going actually, down. I would prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> His wife would be protesting. I'd be like, this doesn't mean you're gay. Right. It means I'm drunk and making a point. Absolutely. And this plane's going down. Exactly. Do, yeah. you, do you fly for free now because you're a McMahon? No. And you know what? I think that that's a great point. Um, I should be flying for free. I think so too. I mean, I I am Delta Diamond. I'm very Delta loyal. And after obviously having, uh, you know, Delta in the blood, I know like my grandfather growing up, we would never, we were never allowed to fly certain other airlines. He's like, cause I know who's working on those planes. He's oh, like, no, yeah. no, no, it was Delta or bust. Um, but no, I should get free flights for life. I, I dated a girl whose dad got like some lifetime achievement award and his part of the award was any two people you want will fly free for the rest of their life. And really? she got she got it, so she flies oh. free for the rest oh. of her life. Oh, I mean, Sully must like Captain Sully. She must Sully. have dumped you because you would have never let. Oh that yeah, go. Like she got that award. She's <laughs> like, Let's go to Maui and have brunch. <laughs> Ooh, <it's> a... <laughs> oh, well, speaking of airlines, yeah. and not being uh, Delta Diamond, uh huh, because I was flying uh, Southwest. Oh God bless. I was just doing some shows in Tacoma and mm-hmm. that neck of the woods, and now you guys tell me. So uh, I travel with a guy named Mike August. He books all the shows. He does all the he does all the stuff. Uh, Mike doesn't like. He's one of these people that doesn't like to admit when he was wrong. Mm-hmm. Do we know these people? Oh, we know these people. And the people that don't admit they're wrong, they put it back on you for being argumentative. Uh huh. But the reality is, is they could have just went, "My bad. It's not going to happen again. Sorry." And then we'll turn the page. But what they want to do is they want to dice it up. They want to double down. And then they want to know why you're obsessed with this and why we're having this argument. Because, sorry, screw the pooch. Not going to happen again. There is no more arguing after that. Or if there is, that makes you a world-class douchebag. (laughs) So Mike does this move to me. Mike does a lot of these. Doesn't like to admit he's wrong. So we're, we're in Vegas. We got the connection to Tacoma or wherever the hell we're going. And they're boarding the Southwest. And Mike has both boarding passes with him, mine and his. And we're getting toward the plane. And I, I'm look, I'm not a hero like your grandfather, but I will call myself a hero, which is I always use the bathroom at the airport before I get on the plane. Everyone should do it. The people that are using the bathroom while the gate is still hooked up, you fucking animals. No, insane. There's a real toilet. It's yes. on terra firma. We don't have to fly with your pot of piss or shit for mm-hmm. the next three hours. Yeah. Like, Just go hit the bathroom and then get on the plane. So yeah. I say, uh, Mike. I'm going to go hit the bathroom up the up the way there, and I'll come back and we'll get on the plane. And he goes, okay. Now, I go to the bathroom. Number one, you know, I didn't even wash my hands. In and out. In and out. 
And then I come walking out, and most people have boarded the plane, and I can't find Mike. And I'm like, did he get on this plane? And then why is he on the plane? But he's got my boarding pass. I right. don't think I have my boarding pass. And I start like patting myself down. And this he is must odd think, pattern, by the way. He must, yeah, he's never done this before. Okay. And so he goes, so I go, oh man, my boarding pass. He must think I have my boarding pass. He wouldn't have got on the plane with my boarding pass. And then I'm thinking, oh shit, can he get off the plane once he's on the plane? Because I'm a boarding pass. Well, maybe I can reprint it or something. And I'm, I got a little agina. You know, I got a little anxiety for a moment of, whoa, what I do? What, did I drop it in the bathroom or something? So I call Mike and I go, uh, Mike, uh, where are you? He goes, I'm on the plane. I go, well, you have my boarding pass, right? And he goes, no, I left it at the gate. I left it at the front. And I go, well, it would have been nice if you called me and told me you did <laughs> yeah. that. And he says, I'm telling you now. No, no, <laughs> tell it. that's an absolute not that's impossible. No, no. The, I'm telling you now I called you. I called you. And now you want to backtrack? No, 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 no. This is revisionist history of the highest yeah. order. You're so. being gaslit. Yeah. Beyond, <laughs> I'm I mean, telling you're on you fire. now. Yeah, you're on fire. That's yeah. So then what did you do? I was like, then I walked up to the thing and I went, uh, uh, I was told my boarding pass was, and now you need ID because yeah. they're not, they don't believe you. Right. <laughs> Why? By the way, you think anyone's trying to get on a Southwest flight? <laughs> to Tacoma? Like, yes. what are we doing? What are we doing here? Right. Yeah. So, uh, he has a law degree. Does that hold up in court? That kind of argument? That was a, that was a good one. Oh, and I wrote down, uh, I wrote down the other one, which is, which is, oh, and they got another great travel one with Mike. All right. So I'm telling you now. Which did remind me of a cute Freddie and the Dreamers song, by the way, from the 60s. Back, back when music was sort of happy. Yeah. Now it's all it's, fucking grungy and pissed off and it's really dark. and angry. Yeah, yeah. It's all <laughs> angry. Freddie and the Dreamers wouldn't write a Listen, right, right. Yeah. Listen I'm, to these things. Okay, songs. I'm taking it all in. And any road stories you might have mm -hmm. as well. Um, so now we're leaving... Tacoma. Well, I don't know where I Spokane. was. Spokane. Spokane. I'm leaving Spokane. <laughs> we have a 625 flight out of Spokane. PM or AM? AM. Okay. Oof, it's already too early. Yeah. That's like nauseous level early. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. don't worry. Two shows. Yeah. Late show. <laughs> Fuck. Got back to the hotel. Got back to the hotel about 11. Yeah. 11.30. And you don't fall asleep till about, I at least don't fall asleep till like 3 a.m. You know, no, I can't you have turn to it stay off. up. You, you have, have to, to have a up. drink. You have to watch some sports center. Yeah, for me, it's TikTok, and I'm just, you know, let my brain seep out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. First off, the begin the genesis of this is my problem. And you guys tell me if you're wired this way. I'm, I understand it's 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And I understand it is, I already weighs it, it's 33 minutes to the airport from this hotel. Okay. And I understand that the flight is 625. It's not 635. Right. And I understand we're <laughs> checking a bag. Oof. But I psychologically, I say, we'll leave at 5 a.m. Because 445 is too cycle. It can't start with a four. I hear you. It's 11 <laughs> at night. Might as well be a different day. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I need the five. I need it to start with the five. Even 455 is... is <laughs> injurious emotionally to me. We're <laughs> sure. starting this number with Nobody a four. Nobody should do anything in the four. Yeah. Could be nothing. Before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So I go five. Okay. Wheels up. Mm -hmm. Five o'clock. Fair. And um, Rudy, my opener, and Mike, five. That's when we leave. But but we have to leave at five because we're, it's going to take a half hour plus and that'll leave us less than an hour when we get there and we're checking a bag. And... The goddamn airport was a zoo, which always makes me angry. But right. people should be angry at me because I'm in there, too. And I'm always like, what the fuck are you people doing in my airport? <laughs> what? what gives you the right? Don't you know I have to get to Burbank? Right. Like, well, who are you people? <laughs> like, I always get angry at everyone. Why is everyone traveling? We should have staggered this shit. Yeah, it's like, don't you? I know that I have shows, but what are y'all fucking doing with I'm your fuck, life? I'm telling, oh, a family reunion? Go fuck yourself. I'm telling <laughs> fart jokes and making fun of my family. What's your business for travel? Actually, the same material. The exact same material. <laughs> so, um, I'm there. It's packed. But... We go back. 
So I come down, oh God, set the alarm for 4.40. Yeah. Never pack the night before. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> do you do that? Oh, yeah. You're smart. I'm, I'm running this ship like it's a, it's a military operation. Yeah. I always, always pack. I get up at 4.40. Okay. I go down at about two minutes to 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I see Rudy sitting, my opener, sitting there in the rented car. Nice. And I, I come out and I go, where's Mike? Because he always beats me mm-hmm. to the car. But he didn't beat me this time. And I'm like, because I study patterns, okay. something's up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> something's up. Yeah, if he's, he's not always, early, he's late. He's always before me. And now it's five straight up. And if we're, we can't be wheels up at 5.08. We have to be wheels up at right five. now. Because even right now, we're cutting it real close. So I call Mike, and he picks the phone up, and he does not sound like his usual self. And he's like a little flustered, and he just goes, I'm, 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 coming, I'm coming down now, coming down now. And I'm like, oh, shit, I think I woke him up or right. something. Anyway, two, three minutes later, he comes down. We don't have time. We jump in the car, head off. Now we're cutting it close. And he goes, goddamn wake-up calls. Oh, yeah. They've always whiffed the wake-up call. And I'm like, Mike, three weeks ago in San Francisco, I said, don't use the wake-up. Use your phone. This, you, well, and he this goes, they happened always, in Chicago with us, right, They go, he, they always whiff it. They, I go, Mike, you're raking my case. <laughs> is this, what is this, what 1942? Is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who didn't have 17 alarms on their on their phone? I said to him, yeah, in Chicago or wherever the hell. Yeah, we're, we're in Chicago when when he missed a wake up call as well. And this, yeah, it, it's weird. It's an outdated technology. The amount of time it takes for you to call the front desk and ask for a wake up call, you can ask Siri to do that, and also, she'll do it for you. No hate, no shade to anybody in the hospitality biz, but they're already understaffed. You know, they're overworked, underpaid, uh, understaffed. So th- if you're going to rely on somebody on the night shift to then tell somebody on the morning you're shift, the Sunday night graveyard. Yeah, what are we doing? Too many here? variables. Too many Low variables. Yeah. On the total and Paul, yeah. right? So, <laughs> Mike, I gave, I gave him a whole speech three weeks ago. Like I said, look, Mike, I am the least competent technological person <laughs> on the planet. If I can figure out how to set the alarm on my phone, then anybody can do it. And he's like, I got an Android. And I'm like, it's got to have a clock on it. It's got a <laughs> clock, right? There's got to be a button for it. He's like, I don't know, man. Oh, and, and I'm like, wow. Mike, you got to figure this out. So he, and then he goes, he goes, this one too. He goes, I called in and asked for a wake up call. And I asked them if it was automated and they said no. And I was like, <laughs> oh, wow, Mike, now you're really relying on yeah. this $14 an hour GED tote and high as a kite graveyard guy to call you at 4 30 in the morning. And you called him at 11 15. He's half you know? asleep. <laughs> what? Well, I'm concerned. Do we need to switch up the team? I'm a little concerned. You might. You may be right because then- <laughs> the, the fact that you even have somebody with you that is relying on a wake up call from a Holiday Inn Express <laughs> is just alarming and to me. <laughs> angry. Walked past the guy, yelled at him because the guy's still standing at the oh, front right. desk. Mm. You know, he wa- There's nobody in this place. It's four. It's five a.m. Right. On, a, on a Monday morning. So this poor guy just standing there. Mike shoots him a look, gives him a gives him a call out. So Mike, so Mike's pissed, and I'm like, wow. Mike, this is on you, because I told you to do this, and it keeps happening. And yeah, got to get it in your phone, which I don't think he's going to do. But for the amount that you guys travel, I'm surprised it's only happened like three times. You know why? Because he magically <laughs> wakes up. He's. I said, well, then how the fuck did you wake up? I mean, you you go to bed at 11:30. It's pitch black outside. <laughs> you just woke up at 4.50? And if he's I, like, I just wake up. Because he doesn't trust the wake-up call. <laughs> the See, anxiety wakes him up. That, that the anxiety wakes me up, too. Like, if yeah. I know I have an early flight, I mean, I had to get up super early, you know, or in, the, like, the 4.45 range today. And it, you kind of, like, all night, you have the shakes, yes, you know? Yes, yes. And then you wake up, even if you haven't had anything to drink, you just feel yeah. hungover, and you yes. have a headache yes. till at least noon. And then yes. finally, I start to feel like I'm sobering up, and I'm like, I, ha- you know. Yes. I, I hate it. So it's, it's he hard. said, but here's yeah. what's his answer. I said, Mike, you got to use your phone. And he said, I don't trust the phone. <laughs> so I think these are not pathways toward correction, is what is what I'm saying. We need what we need is this 
I fucked up. You're right. Show me how to do it, or I'll go go online and watch a I'll video. I need an action right. step. I need right. an action step. I need an fit. action step. Get him a fucking Apple Watch. You know, like that thing's right by your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Doesn't trust the phone. I, I, I definitely think maybe we should look for new opportunities for him. And... Yeah, let's talk off the air. Who are you with? Yeah. yeah. I'm wow. telling you now. Uh, I, we run the road pretty pretty strict because also to my buddy, Chris, who's my producer on the road, he ran these giant Broadway tours. Uh-huh. So like if you missed the bus, if you were on like, you know, uh, the Grease tour and you missed <laughs> the bus, you had to figure out a way to get to the next town. Right. I mean, the, and that's only like myself, an opener, my buddy Chris or my um, or uh, my uh, business partner, Christina. So we run a small ship, but the, everybody knows wheels up, wheels up at 5 a.m. Your ass better be down there. Yeah. Well, the wake up call and we're knocking on the door of 2024. You should be able to use There's your no, phone. Yes. Wow. You should be able to use the phone. Yeah. There's nothing more annoying to than when an older generation like is stuck in a way where you're like, okay, the wake up call doesn't work at the hotel. Just go ahead. Lean into a little bit of technology. We're I, not asking you to use a social media app. We're asking you just to use the fucking like phone that's next to or the, the clock that's next to the calculator on the phone. <laughs> Uh, listen, nobody's <laughs> older, dumber, and less technologically <laughs> wise than me. And again, if I can do it, then anyone can do it. Yeah. Um, also, though, I would like, I, I miss the clocks in the hotel rooms. They're getting mm. rid of the clocks. And I don't like knowing if you go to bed when it's dark and you get up when it's dark, you just have no goddamn idea what time it is. It's always too early. But I mean, I like. The you only, like to roll over and you like to see that neon. The only an- good anxious. part, yeah. the only good part, uh, there is no good part. But if there's one saving grace from going to bed at 1130 and knowing you're getting up at 430 in the morning is waking up at like 220 mm-hmm. and like looking at the clock and going, oh, OK, I'm going to now I'm going to take two a, hours. I got no, I'm taking a two hour nap. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I will now reclassify this yeah. as a nap. And a two-hour nap's a long nap. Mm-hmm. So that I'm going to take a nice, long two-hour nap. That's a good point. But I, if I don't know what time it is, it drives me nuts. I I know. I'm kind of like, I also now put my phone, I have to, because I'm addicted to like, you know, the TikToks. So I have to put my phone like in the bathroom. Because mm-hmm. if not, I like will plug it in. So when I'm like, I'm making a conscious effort to turn it the fuck off, I will go plug it in in the bathroom so it's not melting next to my head. Right. And then I'm like, that alarm will wake me up. Do you know... Uh, Comedian Sam Morrell. Yes. Uh, I don't know why, but it popped up on my t- tick now on my tweets or whatever. I don't know why it made me laugh, but you know, he likes to call into local radio shows or TV shows and, and fuck he with them. Fucks with them in the best way. I know. And the one just made me laugh. And I thought, well, there's a couple comedians who've done this a million times. So we should watch. Oh, wait, him. I saw this. Yes. Him calling into the Columbus morning show. <laughs> Talk about what people can expect. I mean, have you been to Columbus before or is this the first time for you? No, I've been. I've been. I love Columbus. Uh, great city. Big fan of uh, despite all the human trafficking uh, <laughs> going on there. I still find uh, a lot of fun. A great city. <laughs> You've got your class act tour coming to the Southern Theater this Friday, yeah. October 27th. Tell us what we, what we, can, we can expect with that. I'm going to talk about the human trafficking <laughs> epidemic in Columbus, Ohio. What is going on with the human tra? What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, are you uh, a big sports fan? What's going on with that? I'll tell you what I'm not a fan of. It. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're going with There are a lot of news reports, yes. All right, well, listen, Sam, enjoy your time here in Ohio. and um, We'll yeah. look forward to seeing you. Thanks, Thank Sam. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good one. I don't get, I don't know. I think he would, you know, I know he's kind of edgy and funny. I didn't get the human trafficking thing because it really wasn't funny the first time. Oh. And then he kept doing it two and three and four times. And I, just, <laughs> and I tried to ask him. You saw me try to ask him, are, are, is this a joke? Are you trying to be funny? What are you trying to do? We'll be right back. <laughs> well, I was just trying to explain. The audience saw, just saw the same thing, too. She's okay, like, you're an idiot. Break. Yeah. Okay. Although... I- if he did that to a woman, he would definitely be shit canned. Like if she was going, I was just trying to figure out, and he, and he like, was like waved the hand, like, "Hey, sweetheart, okay. quiet. Yeah, yeah. I'm throwing a commercial. The man's going to toss it to break." <laughs> he would have got fucked up if he did that to her. So Sam doesn't know me personally, but I've been a big fan of him. Uh, and 
uh, we were on a flight together flying back to Atlanta from New York and it was such a great example of like his fans versus mine. So we're both sitting in first class. He's sitting in front of me and uh, a fan gets on and she comes up to me and she's like, Heather, oh my God, big fan coming to see your show in Charleston this weekend. Listen, I have a hotel. Like, let me put you up. Stay in the penthouse. Like, whatever. Like, literally throwing gifts at me, right? Cool. Just like biggest fan. Da, da, da. Then Sam's fan gets on right behind this woman and she, this guy just goes, fucking right, Sham. Fuck yeah. <laughs> And then like fist bumps him. Meanwhile, I'm getting like, you know, gifts thrown at me because women are just so generous. And this guy just fist bumps him and was like, fucking right, sham. And then keeps walking. And I was like, this could not be a better example of just how different our audiences are. Sure. And I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how there's so many different. I mean, I always say this and I'll say it again just because it made Penn Jillette laugh really hard. But when I was... um. I always think about the time I was in the backyard. This is the difference between, you know, there's not just comedy. There's your kind and his kind and everyone's right. kind. But talking to Bob Ringwald, father of Molly Ringwald, mm -hmm. blind musician in his backyard when I was 16 or 17, because they used to live down the street from me before anyone was famous. And um, I said, Bob, I love, he, we're just talking. And he I said, you know what I love? I love, I love jazz. And I love comedy. I love mm -hmm. stand-up comedy and jazz. And he said, me too. He said, me too. And then he said, I love Gallagher and and bluegrass. And yeah. I was like, no, not that. <laughs> <laughs> he thought we were going to bond. I was picturing Coltrane and George Carlin. Right, you right. know what I mean? And that's that's when it like dawned on me. There's There's so much variation. Yeah. I listened to a very specific jazz playlist before while I'm getting ready backstage. Shout out to Spotify. It's a cocktail. It's called just cocktail jazz on Spotify. And I don't know what it is. I think because like when you're in comedy and you're like, you know, podcasting and everything, it's just like a constant sense of like overstimulation all the time. So when everybody thinks that you, I'm like backstage drinking wine, like, you know, tearing it up, I listen to cocktail jazz and put on my makeup. It's like so, so old lady, so vanilla. And it just soothes me before I go out on stage. I, I agree. I would. I don't listen to anything, but I would, if I'm around, if I want to get something done, yeah, or I'm trying to think, I listen to classical music, yeah, because there's no lyrics. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting there trying to form a thought or go over your own, like, all right, never thought about it before, but you know when you're trying to calculate something, like you're trying to add up some numbers or you're trying to do some calculation of like, oh, if I get. 8% mortgage and the mortgage is set, uh, $1 million. And how? And then the TV's on and they go, call one 800 887 And you have to stop because you go, well, fuck, now I don't know where I right. am. And you go, why? Well, because I heard somebody. Here's well, it wouldn't it be the same with words? Like right. you're trying to come up with a joke. You're trying, to, you're trying to connect words. You're trying to connect ideas. And then you're listening to like rap music where they're right. shouting <laughs> words at you. Right? Right. And, and then I started thinking about, I don't think it's a coincidence that the home of classical music, like the birthplace of classical music, I don't know, Germany, I don't know, Germany, I think of, they make the best cars. The place where they listen to the least classical music is Mexico, and you can't do calculations when a guy's pounding away an accordion <laughs> and beating a, a tub. You know, like if you listen to ranchera music, you go, I can't do anything but get drunk. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll beat one of my kids, but I didn't even think it would throw me off. You can get shit faced. You can't put together like calculations and ideas. Like we, if they played that music, in, in if they just pumped that shit into Germany, Porsche wouldn't be around. There'd be right. no space program. There'd be nothing. You cannot study. I mean, I, dri that. I drive a fantastic Audi, and that is because somebody yes. was listening to <laughs> Wagner. <laughs> yeah, Wagner. <laughs> exactly. That's a really good point. Smart observation there. Yeah. Listen to classical music when you're trying to put the thoughts together. Have you ever been driving home from a gig or just in your car in general and then you realize you've been in the car for like an hour in complete silence and you're wow. like, oh my God, the thoughts in my brain were so loud. I thought I was like listening to the radio. Yeah. Where you like, you get home and you're like, wow, I just, I mean, because it's, you know, we're so overstimulated and you're just like, oh, I was actually just in complete silence the entire way home. I, the, the, yes, in my head, the shouts of kill a pedestrian were yeah, so yeah. loud, <laughs> so loud that I forgot to turn on Sirius XM. Right. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. What are we doing when we come back? We'll just talk to Heather more? Yeah. 
All right, we'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about Simply Safe. There's no wrong time to protect your home, but this fall, well, that's an especially good time because you can get up to 50% off a brand new Simply Safe system. You want that home security system. I use it. We all use it here. They've been sponsors for a million years. They were voted best home security system of 2023 by U.S. News and World Report. It's sleek. It's ergonomic. It batteries last up to 10 years. Peel and stick. Set it up. Do the whole system like under half an hour. 24-7 professional monitoring. Under a buck a day. Half the cost of a traditional home security system. Money back guarantee, by the way. You can try it out. 60 days. Risk-free. If you don't love it. Return your system for a full refund. And for a limited time, you can save 50% on any new system with a fast protect plan. Visit simplysafe.com slash Adam. Two eyes. Simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Yeah. Heather McMahon, <laughs> son I never had. It is uh, out as we speak. It's on Netflix. It looks great. It sounds great. Yeah. It's great. So, so right after, after that story, you talked about co-hosting the Today Show. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little more about that and like what that did? Because um, the Today Show is on during like daytime hours. I don't yeah. know what kind of reach it really has these days, but I mean... It's huge. It's insane. So I... Maria Shriver basically went on the Today Show and she was talking to Jenna and Hoda, who are the other two co-hosts, and she said, you know who you should have on the show? Heather McMahon. She's my favorite comedian. And then the next thing you know, the producers were calling and I was actually at, in LA at a wellness retreat and I had been doing edibles with these professional <laughs> athletes and the next day I literally had to get on a flight and fly to New York to co-host the Today Show. It changed my life overnight. So I owe a lot to Maria and Jenna and Hoda and then every time I've had a milestone in my career, like I've gone back, I announced the tour, I announced Radio City, like all these different things. Uh, these moments have been because of those ladies. And I mean, listen, I am, you know, I'm a nighttime gal. I My, my comedy is not, you know, necessarily clean. Um, so for me, for them to give me a platform and let me go Go on there and like kind of let it rip at 10 a.m. is amazing. <laughs> and I'm so grateful to them. Don't they drink wine? Well, they used to. Now, when Kathy Lee Gifford was on the show, they were, I mean, they still have a good time. Don't get me wrong. But she really was a, a booze hound throwing it back. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, they'll have segments. I mean, when I'm on, we always have a cocktail, but mm -hmm. they're great. It is honestly, Hoda turned to me one time and she's like, Heather, this is the best gig in television. She's like, whenever I retire, whenever that is, she's like, you should come for my job. She's like, this is the best gig. And I was like, all right, well, you said it. So just <laughs> keep my name in the, uh, uh, you know, in the atmosphere for that. Yeah, it's a great gig. I mean, they, they have crazy hours. Like, you know, Hoda will do, f you know, uh, five different hours because she'll start at, at what, 5 a.m. and then keep going. But it's a really cool, cool job. And they're the nicest people. I'm really, I just can't say enough great things about them. And the way they move, like, live morning television is the gnarliest production. Oh, yeah. Ever. Yeah, yeah. They're always rolling cameras and setting up and moving setting to the next up, place. Setting up, moving ferns, moving couches. People are yelling, looking over here. One minute you're doing a, you know, a bit about a new wine that's come out. The next thing where it's like, how do we save starving kids? Mm. It, you know, and then like, who's got the best barbecue in New York City? It's just bizarre. Your head's on a swivel. Um, but I'm, I have crippling ADHD, so I find like I thrive in those kind of environments. You know, I'm just I, ping ponging around. The last time I remember doing a morning, one of those morning shows. Yeah. I think I was on like the Fox one where you sit between four gals yeah. on that, that crescent shaped sofa. I mean, it's still on. That's the, not the top. Is it the Fox and Friends? Probably Fox and Friends. It's just yeah. me. I remember sitting in front of, you know, the Fox chicks all yeah. put together, mm -hmm. little uptight, yeah. you know, not, not Hoda with the glass of wine in her hand. Uh huh. And I was just sitting in between them and I said, I don't know why we're, we're on a subject, but it, I said, it was like Bill Clinton or something. And I go, who do you think has had sex like l the least or within the last five years? Like who's less likely Bill and Hillary Clinton? Cause he hasn't porked her in like f 14 years. Right. right? Or uh, Oprah <laughs> and Stedman. And oh. they, they all just like looked at me and went like, <laughs> what? And I was like, come on. Come on, that's a good that's a good one, right? Right. And they're like, uh, 
okay, we're just going to move on. Yeah. And, and they're all like, it was nine in the morning on Fox. <laughs> and they're all looking at me. And I was like, that's funny. Well, the, that is great. And also it's annoying. When and like, I'd like you, an answer. I would also very much so like an answer. And I think it would be, I think Oprah's had sex with Dead Man. I do. I, I do. do too. Even though I think we all know she's probably, you know, in a, in a longtime partnership with Gail. Which she's getting plugged by Gail. She sure is. Gail's and good for them. Yeah. Good for them. They have, they have their thing. Stedman's in on it. He's the <laughs> overseas, I don't know, the farm in Maui or whatever that is going on there. Stedman couldn't be happier. He's great. Because th- she's like, well, I'm going to go with Gail uh-huh. and we're going to go hike up to a volcano and we'll be back in four days. And Stedman's <laughs> like, I'm going to crack a beer and fucking watch my 200 inch TV exactly. in your house. Yeah. He's living the dream. But I do love when they when all these like morning shows have comedians on. And then when we do what our job is, to to say something funny, they're always like, "Well, I didn't see this coming." Like, yeah. what the fuck do you think is happening? Well, here? that's a Sam Morrell thing. Like, what's yeah. he doing? Making some kind of joke? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like, you actually have a, a serious human trafficking problem in Columbus. But he's also he's there plugging <laughs> His a stand up gig, mm-hmm. not a cat rescue program. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Because that would be out of context. Mm-hmm. But it's not out of context for him. All right, you tell me. I don't know how down you are with world events oh but god here we go i am so tired of all this but you you're totally entitled to your own opinion i just found out that soccer team president of spain the spain the women's team he kissed that woman on the on the lips when they were celebrating okay when they were celebrating a few several months ago yeah. they won the world title and he like grabbed her and kissed her correct yeah, yeah he he did except for everyone was kissing everyone and hugging everyone and and just jubilation and he grabbed him and gave the kiss by the way the kiss he gave her is the kiss that one man gives to another man if you want people to think you're not gay yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it's you are the team owner and he just won the indianapolis 500 and i as the team owner rush over to the driver put my hands on his head and go Mwah! yeah because it's it's like it's 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 a celebratory thing it's not a passion i hear you no tongue no tongue is involved no tongue tongue. it would also be weird if you're on a date and somebody like clamp down like that way it couldn't be farther from romantic it's it's only a public kiss is what it is and then the chicky kiss didn't get pissed and nobody cared and then all of a sudden all the wokesters got involved and they all launched a campaign and then she had to change her story about feeling very uncomfortable and, Mm. and and it's all bullshit and now the guy, after just winning the title for Spain, he now has a three-year suspension. Three years he can't come back for this one stupid, really? celebratory, completely in context act. First off, I hope the bitches at the Spanish, on the Spanish women's soccer team, I hope they never fucking lose. I hope they never win another game. So she came back and said she was uncomfortable, though? Well, the way... There, so here's the new things, yeah. the, the new world order is is something happens right. and then you go it wasn't a big deal and then there's footage of you laughing with your teammates yep. and drinking uh-huh. champagne and stuff and then at some point whoever does this and they should kill themselves starts <laughs> getting some momentum online hey right. this wasn't right this, this is a this violation is a big deal. this yeah. is a violation this is a big deal and then and then some point they start getting to you and then you have to kind of change your story. Otherwise, that mob's going to run you over as well. So then you have the person who said it was nothing three times saying it was something three days later. I hear you. And so now he is completely banned from the sport. Yes. Yeah, for three for three years. Isn't it pretty just European in general? I mean, I, 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 I spent a lot of time in Italy, and I, oh, right. I've made out with a man with no teeth just on a, out of the corner. You know what I mean? <laughs> of, like in front of a, a panino, panino shop. So, um, wow. Okay. I mean, that's fucked up. Listen, everybody's going. I mean, I, I thought for a little while when there was like huge cancel culture, then the pendulum kind of swung the other way, right? Now everyone's mm-hmm. like, call, everybody pump the fucking brakes and calm down. Yeah. But I mean, listen, I got to be honest with you. She came back and she said, I was really uncomfortable. I mean, do we know if he, he did this all the time? You know the, the SNL sketch where they were the, the, the Volacheks or whatever, and it's Fred Armisen, and they were the kissing family? Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, is this guy doing this all the time? And now, finally, she was just like, we're celebrating. Oh, I'm not upset. And then came back and was like, actually, he's been doing this in the locker room every day, and we're all really creeped out by it. She but. said he was great. And okay. Okay. It never had a problem with him, or and he never had a problem with any of the women Got on it. the soccer team. Before right. and her first interview 
was he was great. Also, we should be celebrating the fact that you guys won a world championship. Instead, we're just talking about this non-incident. Yeah, now the, now all the attention's on the guy. It's not about yes. the women who yes. actually did the work, put in the yes. work to win. Yeah, this it's is a on, bigger story. This is a better story. Yes. I mean, listen, probably my tour is an HR nightmare. You know, I'm backstage <laughs> with all of my friends and we're just, <laughs> just doing whatever. So, um, wow. I mean, fuck. Oh, God. I, I, I don't, I, I mean, this, I'm, I'm fresh to the story, but I, uh, like you said, that was a better story. So they yeah. went with it. That's, yeah, and it's a bigger story. And that's what more people are focused on. Remember, he even, he even did a press conference saying, I'm not going to resign. Yeah. This is bullshit. Yes. Uh, not, I guess not his choice at this point. And then remember his mom. Three years. His mom went to a church and had a hunger strike, which my mom would never do for me, <laughs> ever. Yeah, she but, is. <laughs> but a three year suspension? I mean, I mean, whatever your job is, no doing comedy for three years. Like one year's devastating. Yeah, that's insane. Well, like the Will Smith thing when he slapped Chris Rock, I was like, yeah, fuck this guy, right? Yeah, right. But, but that seems insane. But now we're hearing Jada Pinkett's side of the story. Exhausting. It literally yeah. exhausting. Thank God for the internet. I love the side of the internet that I have now somehow ended up on people, the memes, the, all of it. They're just like, enough, Jada. Uh, yeah. You know, she's not helping his cause at all. I, ugh, exhausting. I don't, and we have a clip of her, I think, from, uh, I don't know. Just not she shucking. Was, maybe she was she, talking to Hoda. We have one yeah. with Hoda and one with a Stephen Colbert. She, Okay. I've been screaming about this for a million years and no one will listen to me. <laughs> what the fuck is going on with circle talking? Yeah. Now, it is, guys do it. It's predominantly dominated by women of color. Mm -hmm. It's like Oprah is a pioneer in the circle talk. Then she goes out with Michelle Obama and does a speaking tour. They're both talking in a circle. Jada Pinkett is a circle talker. It's uh, Kamala Harris is a circle talker. It's like, I want to be at my best, but in order to be my best, I have to be my best self. And I can't <laughs> be at my best self if I'm not eating, um, I'm not eating uh, Bestman's mayonnaise who, I, I, I to just circle. So I don't, I, I'm always like, what's the plan? What are we doing? Why are we going in a circle? And then why is that satisfying to so many people? Because I'm repulsed by it. I think what we can play a little. Yeah, let's see what she's saying. I can play that. So wait, just so I'm 100% clear, you were divorced, not on right. paper, but now we might be a point where we're back together. We are working very hard at bringing our relation, yes, bringing our relationship together. Back, back to a marriage again. Back to a life partnership. Ship. Yes. It was like when Gwyneth Paltrow mm -hmm. and um, Chris Martin, right, when they broke up, it was a conscious uncoupling. Like, right. no one cares. I, 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 She's obviously pushing her book, but I'm like, what publicist pulled you aside and said, this is the story we're gonna run with? Yeah. Who was on your team that was said, this is how, you know, I'm sure there are plenty of other interesting things in the book that you could have run with, but now it's just, we were really separated for seven years. Well, then that just makes Will look like more of an asshole. You know, I, I'm like, what are we doing here? I, I have no idea. I'm just as confused as you are. Same as circle talk. The whole thing is just a circle marriage. I mean, like, and then it's Will a circle comes jerk. back and he's <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah. Will is like, oh yeah, I support my wife. Like. And he, he's like doing an ounce. It's like, you don't know if these two are together or not the entire time. Like every time they do something, they, they say something about this, this topic. I don't know. Would the best job in the world be being their nanny at that house? Or would that be the worst, craziest, most fucked up job in the world? I think that'd be the worst, most fucked up job. Also, I mean, listen, their kids now are fully grown, right? Yeah. So she also did say that she was doing psychedelics with her son, that that's helped her out. I mean, years ago, they slipped, leaked, put it out there that she was having a, um, what was, what did they call it? Shit. Um, that she was having an affair with this singer, August oh, yeah. Alsina, right? So they, I mean, they were already letting it slip that she was having another guy on the side. So I don't know what the, the end goal was for these last 10 years. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what we're trying to achieve here. I, I don't know. Like it feels, well, it's nice to see a black guy get cuckolded for a change. That's all I can say as a white man. Because you imagine your fucking wife talking about fucking some other other guy and you're Will Smith and you just have to sit there and just like sit there, eat it. Yeah. And you're this big macho action right. star too. Mm. Like, 
And I think he went on the defense on Instagram and did so, he, he put put up a video where he was like laying down on a boat and he was like yeah. turning off notifications. He's like, I'm not going to be involved with this. I don't know if he's said anything since then. He has. He, he has. Yeah, okay. He what did has. he say? But it, it was like, oh, I just want I support Jada. Like he was he's being very supportive of her. It was weird. Like we wanted all him to be angry about it and upset, but he he was just it, it was as if they were never split up. Like he was. Do we have any more clips of? Do the Stephen Colbert one, Byron. The Stephen Colbert one. I'd love to see what Colbert has to say to this. It's so weird. Also, I've realized that there are people that have angular faces and Mm -hmm. look bright, (laughs) say stupid (laughs) shit, and we nod because they look they look the part. Like, yeah, oh yeah, no, she's got something really interesting. No, that's. Mm Oh, that's profound. But they're not really saying anything. Right. Like if they were fat with a triple chin, you'd go, hey, lard ass, yeah. shut up. Like, no one, no like one knows I have what a you're thicker neck. About. You know what I mean? There are days where I'm like, if you catch me at an angle, I'm like, I got a thicker neck. So don't ask me to, you know, give a, a TED talk anytime You got to tell soon. jokes and dance. Yeah, yeah, we exactly. We don't want to hear you pontificating about nothing for I half shake hour. my tits for cash. That's, that's what right. I do. That's I know exactly my place. Right. That's what uh, she says. Teach me the lesson. Teach me the holy lesson of that moment. You know... I had to learn not to take any of it personally. And I had to learn, I learned so much about shadow. My shadow, Will's shadow, just everybody's shadow that was in the collective Chris Rock's shadow, shadow, because I think Will slapped it right out of him. (laughs) (laughs) So in that moment, I've never met Colbert, but in that moment, I can tell he's just like, I'm done with this conversation. Right. He's like, what are we fucking doing here? He pulled the ripcord quick. He pulled the ripcord quick. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been behind the scenes on some, you know, late night shows. Uh-huh. And when whatever 23-year-old chick who sung, or 14-year-old chick who sung the Friday song or something oh, is coming yeah. in, I can tell you that the hosts are not, they'd much rather be talking to Albert Brooks <laughs> about something <laughs> that night other than, you know, what's your favorite Hot Pocket? Yeah. Yeah. So, like just mind numbing. Yeah, but you have to have everyone who's making the rounds and who's the hottest of the day and of the moment, they have to they have to come in. Right. Yeah. All right. So I have no idea what they're doing. I did take a flight with their son. I don't know, Willow. I don't know which. Jaden. <clears throat> Jaden. And then Willow's the daughter. Right. Oh, they got a Jaden. Yeah. And she's a Jada. Jaden mm. and Willow. She's wearing the fucking pants in that in that shit. Because, you know, lots of times you'll do a, you know, Will Jr. or Will Smith Jr. or whatever. But she's, she's she, Jade in is a Jada. I mean, it's a dude version of a yeah. Jada. Yeah. Right? You don't see that very often. I always thought that they were tied up in Scientology. And I'm always mm. nervous to say anything about that because I'm like, I, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. But I always thought that they were tied up in some sort of situation with the Scientologies. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought they were Scientology adjacent. I could be wrong. But to me, that seems like that's why shit's a little fucking weird. At it that feels house. weird. Weird, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not normal. Normal weird is like somebody drinks too much and right. fucked your friend or right. something. But this, <laughs> this defies all of that. Yeah, like why do we need to know? Just say, hey, we've been separated, whatever. We're raising a family together. Bada bing. But now we've made a whole fucking book tour of it. But that Colbert bit, fantastic. Um, well, it's right. time to release a memoir too with Britney Spears releasing hers. Like, Can I tell you, that's all I flex. care about. That's literally, if we do anything, <laughs> we need to you know, help Britney. But that memoir has been really interesting. I mean, she is letting people know what's, what's good and what's happened to her in her life. But here's my problem with Britney and her memoir. Okay. So memoir is, here's what happened. Right. And then, you know, Justin Timberlake got me pregnant. And then I had an abortion. Uh-huh. I'm speaking for myself. Right. right. And then we have to go, well, did that happen or did it not happen? Mm-hmm. And I think most people agree they did, but Britney's nuts. So it's not totally, you know, I've not seen any documents from a, you know, from a gynecologist to support it or ultrasounds or whatever. But the problem is, is remember that thing she had with the basketball player in the Vegas hotel like four months ago, five months ago. Oh, that her security hit him and she yeah, didn't know who and, he and, was. And yeah. So she, she then takes to Twitter and said his security hit her and knocked her to the ground. 
But then when you see the footage, she doesn't get knocked to the ground. Mm-hmm. So she's prone to hyperbole, mm. is what I'm <laughs> saying. But I feel like her saying she had a, an abortion, I believe that story, well, hands down. I'm coming back. Oh, for round here we number go. two. Okay. No, I get it, but like when she, if she was talking about some dust up with a celebrity or something, yeah. I'd go. Th- the security guy, without even looking back, just sort of swatted her hand away, uh-huh. and she said, "I was knocked to the ground." And I'm like, "Okay, so you like to supersize events? Mm. You, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying?" Now, abortion. If this was a few years ago, it'd be 100 percent because you'd be like who would want to admit they had an abortion? Like, Uh of course they had an abortion. But we've jumped the abortion shark. Now people are bragging about having abortions, which would have been unthinkable when your grandpa was piloting that (laughs) 737 for the unappreciative souls in the back. Uh, And so now, for the first time ever, you have prominent women, celebrities, Uh and they're going, I've had more than one abortion. And they're saying it like at rallies, and they're getting Uh applauded for it. So there's not the stigma to the abortion now. Right. So... At least, at so are least, you saying you don't believe anything in her memoir? I believe because other women have now come out and said that they're they've had abortion. It's cool to Justin, have abortion. I mean, no, Justin, Justin always pulls out is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. No, I believe that part. I believe that part. I'm just saying. Uh-huh. I tend to not believe things she says. Women. Just, but I, 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 I believe no woman. It's on my license <laughs> plate frame. Christ. Okay. Because uh, she just got done lying about this thing that, that happened. That's why. Listen, I think, you know, if any, if you're going to question anything about Brittany, it is a little concerning the Instagram videos of her dancing with knives and the Christmas tree that's been up since like July in the background <laughs> of her house. That to me is more alarming. Um, but I, I'm a huge Brittany fan. So I, I am... I'm Team Brittany. Okay, I really am. But I also think, you know, I really do think with Brittany, she, I think it's that that rule when you know these when these people become famous at what certain age they kind of quit maturing. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like there's something that stunts them because I don't know if it's like a collective trauma or what it is. Once she kind of hit 15, like you know, she hasn't really matured since. Yeah, you can check the pressured girly voice little girl voice Mm -hmm. that's always a sign that they didn't make it past that that age which she has but she also said the knives were fake she did say the knives were fake we have a history of lying (laughs) that's what i'm what i'm saying about well what do you think about justin timberlake who's been radio silent this entire time hasn't posted anything about it nothing about about the book makes him look even um like you can even tolerate him or, you know, but could he's you even been a little choogy announce... and cringy for a while. Right. Or, but do you even deny or announce hyperbole or anything like that? Or I, I think there, there used to be, there was the old playbook and you got to find that picture of, of Justin. Cause he, he should be way less embarrassed about the abortion and way more embarrassed with his frosted tips and his weird glasses and his two earrings. Like when you <laughs> see pictures of those two, yeah, he looks like, such a like Florida white trash. They all do. Junk. I, I get it, but it was two thousands. We're in the two thousands. You can look. I got plenty of sympathy for the fifty seven year old woman who shows you the picture of her and her IROC Z in New Jersey from nineteen eighty seven with the fu- with the. But fucking, that was the look. With, with huge. That no, was oh, God the damn it. look. Don't don't show a semi normal. I mean, I'm getting hard just there's, looking at it right there. That's the, the look. You're thinking of the one from the 2000 VMAs. Yeah, the, the denim I, look. The, the denim. Of the denim. Like a, yeah, it's denim. Listen, I am oh. going full. So I just want you to know that this look that Brittany has right there, mixed with Justin, is the inspiration for my next costume that I'm wearing to shoot my next special. I swear to God, <laughs> I shoot it next week, and the the team at SNL is making the costume for me. And literally, I said I wanted to look like. Dolly Parton met Cardi B and Justin and Brittany. And then wow. it's all denim and diamonds for the next one. There's one. Now we need one from there's one with his glasses are tinted like purple. You can see yeah. the two earrings and the frosted tips. And it's just like this guy looked like a fucking clown show. But again, it wasn't from the 80s. We're in the 2000s. He has no excuse at this point. So I don't trust him. Growing either. up. <laughs> All girls, you know, had crushes on like NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. Yeah. And I remember being like in the fourth grade and thinking, none of these guys are hot. And I would sit around Good with my you. girlfriends. They're like, we're going to NSYNC. I'm like, I, don't, I never went through like a power lesbian phase. But I said, <laughs> I loved the Spice Girls. I was like, the Spice Girls are fucking hot. 
Yeah. These guys, these clowns, back BSB, Backstreet Boys, in sync, even ninety eight degrees did it, didn't do it for me. Yeah, at I, all. No, no, except for O Town. O Town, fuck love yeah, those love O Town. Oh my God, look yes, at that. Yes, this is. I wow. I mean, would you look at this fucking Joker? I mean, look at this picture, Chris. I've seen it. Yeah, it's re- fucking ridiculous. It's in the two thousands. He should he should get no grace. He should have known <laughs> better. I do miss Joan Rivers and Fashion Police. I wish that would come back. Mm. I mean, you know, God rest her soul. But I, I said we. I do think we should bring a little bit of criticism back to like the red carpets. Oh yeah. You know. Did you, Adam, did you ever have a stylist back in the 90s that was dressing you in ways that you didn't Yeah, what's the worst outfit they, let's prefer? Google. What's the worst they, outfit you've ever done? They, when I was doing Love Line, they would mm. do stuff like getting this bomber jacket. It was like bomber jackets were like a thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, bomber jacket, uh, that's about, that's as about as all I went. did. They, they did, we did a Love Line shoot. I know the, the, this picture. For MTV and they gave me a bomber jacket, and then they also gave me a giant novelty size old school telephone, and I was supposed to like hold it up like I was answering calls. And I was like, no, just no, <laughs> stupid. Like I would say to people all the time, this seems like a good idea now. In a few years, we're going to be making fun of this. Right. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, understand uh. this is, I used to say to people, I'm going to save you from yourself. Yeah, and they'd go, "No, this is a good idea," and I'd go, "I'm saving you from yourself because we're going to take pictures, and then we're going to be embarrassed by these pictures." <laughs> Everything from the '90s is back now. Like the the younger, I've got a 24 year old girl who works for me right now, and she's awesome. And she was like, "Heather, everything you're doing is wrong." You know, she's like, "It's '90s jeans. Yep. It's I mean, everything is like cool early '90s b boy look. That is that is the vibe." Bomber jacket. My hair never changed. I never had. This hair or that hair, just had hair. Yeah, I have the same haircut my probably whole life. Uh, never had earrings. Never had tattoos. Being a never, man is nice and easy, isn't it? You never, know what I mean? You just oh wear a new God. suit. You don't have to worry about anything. Oh, look at you there. Yeah, there's yeah. me in my bomber jacket. Uh, That's still in though. Like that to me is t- timeless, <laughs> priceless. I wouldn't look back at that and be like, "Bad move." That's hot. Yeah, you look hot as hell. Thanks, Ooh. babe. What are you hey. gonna, what are you, you need to bring that back. You I'm got bringing that back the bomber jacket. Do it. They're, <laughs> they're in right now. I mean, I know I'm wearing a power blazer, but, you know, classic pieces. Oh, that was so funny. Speaking of bomber jackets, my only bomber jacket, well, I bought a used bomber jacket when I was young. Okay. Like a real vintage World War II, your grandfather would have. I have a couple of those. Lord over of Korea. His. Yeah. And I actually. It was a good jacket, but it was all tattered where the where the sleeve was and the bottom because they had cloth, a little you know, the end of the jacket on a bomber jacket. And I went to a tailor and had him redo it, and then it looked bitching. Yeah. And then I went to a fucking party and I took it off and somebody stole yeah, it. Yeah, looked too bitching, too bitching. But then <laughs> we'll find him. Let's find him. When I first did Love Line, I I never had any money or any. Dang, I couldn't shop. I, I bought stuff secondhand and stuff. And all of a sudden, uh, I'm doing Love Line, and we finish our first season on MTV. And as a gift, they got you a twenty five hundred dollar gift certificate certificate to Barney's of New York. Oh, fancy shit! And I was like, twenty five hundred dollars on clothes, right? Like, I'm that's a whole wardrobe we for grew you, up you and your family. Sears, J.C. Mm-hmm. Penney, Super Denim, right. You know, Tough Skins. You know, uh, you know, Adidas knockoffs with four stripes right. on the shoe. Like anything, everything had to be a knockoff. You know, twenty five hundred. I'm gonna get, pick up a few suits and a whole whole new wardrobe. Yeah. And and I went there in 1997, and I was like, you know what I want? I want a bomber jacket. I'm gonna buy a <laughs> bomber jacket, and then I'm gonna buy a couple of suits. And I go to like the jacket oh, department, man. and I'm like. I got twenty five hundred bucks burning a hole in my pocket. How much is that bomber jacket? The guy's like four thousand dollars, <laughs> and I'm like, "Are you what?" Yeah, they're like, so, "It's Versace. Yeah. Get your life together." I, I fucking bought slippers. <laughs> yeah, and I left this pocket square for you. And every year they do it, but I never went back to Barney's of New York. I went to Barney's Outlet Mall. Nice. That's in ca- Camp. Uh, Camarillo. <laughs> then I would bring my twenty five hundred into that and go fucking sick. I love an outlet. Let me tell yes. you what. 
no matter how successful I get, <laughs> no matter what I do, my favorite thing to do is every, my husband and I like to go to Italy a lot. That's just our thing. We do that. You know, some people buy lake houses. We go to Italy, right? Cool. So we go to these, the outlets outside of Florence. And when I say they got Gucci, they got all of it. And I'm not really a label whore. I'm a, I'm a high, low kind of gal, but I tear it up at the outlets like to the point where I black out. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I will always find something on sale. I will always find a TJ Maxx. I'm not painful price. You go all the way to Italy for I go all the way to Italy to get the VAT tax back. It, yeah. I got the same argument with the outlet mall, which is never near where you live. Ever. It's always on the, we're going to Vegas, we yeah. can stop halfway. <laughs> if you're, if we're going to San Francisco, we can, it's always, but do the math, somebody must live next to an outlet mall. They, it's not like they're in the middle of the desert, like there's housing, what is I feel the same way about the garbage man woke me up at seven forty mm-hmm. today. Somewhere a garbage man has to show up at four. Yeah, <laughs> but never, never in a house I've ever lived in, you and I've lived all over the place. You just it, have to believe it's it always exists. eight a.m. or earlier. But somebody, and maybe there's some kind of program. Like if you you if you live next to an outlet mall, you can't use this one. Right, <laughs> you're gonna have to go to the one. That's on the way to Vegas if you're at the Camarillo one or vice versa. I've got a 3 p.m. garbage pickup at my house in Atlanta. Is that like, are, are they renegades? You got a 3 p.m.? 3 p.m. Oh, I'm moving 3 in. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Yes, it's oh. wild. Oh, my God. Yeah, I've heard of. I know. And Georgia, I mean, I know we do things a little slow there, but <laughs> 3 p.m. garbage pickup. Oh, my God. 4 p.m. mail drop off. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. wow. Uh-huh. That's a spe- I'm That's so spectacular, jealous. right? I'm so jealous. I've been haunted by garbage men my entire life they wake in you Southern up. California. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. We'll take a uh, quick break. We got some news and some more stuff, and we'll do that right after this. Well, let me tell you about Hydro, state of the art, at home rowing machine, delivers a full body workout. It's the ultimate full body workout. Works 86% of your muscles, only takes. 20 minutes, low impact and low risk of injury. I use mine every day, unless I'm on the road. And it is, it's just 20 minutes, you knock it out, you're working your back, you're working your lats, you're working your arms, you're working your quads. It's just, you break a sweat. And frankly, it's just so much better than that endless monotonous treadmill crap. There are workouts that are taught by Olympians and world-class athletes. They're filmed all over the world outside. Uh, You can keep track yourself. You can like race people. You can compete against uh, your your old times and your best times. Hydro keeps you motivated. 90% of the customers are still active one year later. It's, It's really, I mean, you're motivated because, well, first off, it's beautiful. Like you're, you're rowing on a lake. It's just the way to go. And at 20 minutes a day, never an excuse not to do it. Free standard shipping, 30 day risk-free trial, one year warranty. I use it. And believe me, I'm not always motivated to go out and jog or run on a treadmill or go lift weights, but 20 minutes on your hydro, you'll do it every day. Am I right, Dawson? Join the growing rowing community at Hydro. Get early access to Hydro Black Friday savings today. Head over to Hydro.com and use code ADAM to save up to $500 off your Hydro. That's H-Y-D-R-O-W.com. Code ADAM to save up to $500. Hydro.com. Code ADAM. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam. Johnny Hepp in Milwaukee. I was in the airport and I broke down and bought some M&M's and I thought to myself how disappointed you'd be to see somebody eating candy. But I dropped one on the ground, rolled around and stopped in the corner. So I thought I'd bring it back to even and pick it up and eat it. Get it on, man. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. If there were peanut M&M's then I'm fine. I find them far superior to a uh, regular. Absolutely. And the peanut butter M&M's? Forget oh, it. It's peanut butter or anything. Thank you. 
I know. I, I mean, you know, with Halloween, I'm a peanut butter chocolate kind of gal. I never went for like the the fruity the fruity starburst no. even. No. no. What are we doing no. here? I, I, what are we time. doing? What, are, what we doing? are we doing? Are we trying to get fat or not? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And we want to fucking enjoy ourselves. We and want diabetes fucking, and we want it now. now. Yes. Your weird novelty twizzler, no. weird bright orange bullshit. Licorice? licorice? People who like licorice, I, get the fuck out of here. It's not a dessert. Yeah. I, 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 I Okay. Butterfingers were my thing. Listen, Still I, I feel the same way to people. It's like, oh, this is the uh, confetti Jimmy birthday ice cream. It's like, I want chocolate. I want fudge. <laughs> I want peanut butter. I want some walnuts in there. Uh-huh. Like, I want some heft. I want fucking hot apple pie. And I want a piece of big lump of ice cream melting on top of it. I don't want weird confetti. And it's like, oh, but look, it's orange and it's blue and it's green. And it's like. What am I, fucking nine and high? I want dessert. And I don't want to yeah. just get fat eating fucking sugar. I, I, all the novelty stuff. The, the Mike go. and Ike's, the Starburst. <laughs> oh, everyone's into grapevines. Uh, also, if you've vine. ever... Red vines, sorry. If you've ever been to like a Froyo shop... Grapevines were the outlet mall. Yeah, they were. <laughs> if you've ever been to a Froyo shop and put any of those things in ice cream, even if you put M&M's, they become rock hard, like a gummy bear uh, yeah. in, in what frozen yogurt. What are you yogurt, doing? It'll break a veneer. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> they have gum... First off, anyone who's just going for the aesthetic... Uh-huh. Just the aesthetic, like there'll, there'll be cake and it's like, it's a 4th of July cake. It's like red, white and blue. And it's like, all that is is carbs and calories <laughs> and fucking sugar and none of the good part of it. You know what really makes me horny? Mm. A just really good chocolate chip cookie mm. with a little Malden sea salt. Oh, like that the sea perfect. Salt. Perfecto. Um, oh, that combination. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, it took us 2,000 years to fucking put the salt <laughs> on the on, cookie. Onto the cookie. Yeah. We were there in the separate parts of yeah. the kitchen. Oh. Somebody tripped bringing Happy some accident. salt to, to the other side. And Paula it Dean had it out. a stroke. <laughs> yeah, it just salt ended it. up on the cookie. Yeah. It just uh-huh. pulled it out. Oh, God. This is why I've said I've said a million times. It's why Mexico makes shit desserts. You go to Mexico and it's like, would you like a block of sugar shaped like a cactus? And I'm like, (laughs) no, all that is. But 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 they go sugar's the best part. Like, that's what makes a dessert a dessert. And it's like, no, you got to get a little salt. And uh, you got to bring it out. But if you've ever had like a really good churro with the dark chocolate, so it is the sweet with a little bit of the savory, that, that I can fuck with that. Really? Yeah. I, oh, I, I, yeah. I go, I'll just get a donut. I'll go, come on, you change the shape of our donut. Now, I also think people who like actually get donuts in the morning are also kind of like, like serial killers. Like who's going for a donut? You know, and I, I like them, but I'm more of a bagel gal. I need uh, a little, I, I need a little bagel, savory. Yeah. yeah, well, I've gotten a many, many... Many an argument uh-huh. because when you do productions, you got to get the, 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 somebody makes the donut and the mm-hmm. bagel run at yep. some point. And it's, it's every single time they go out and they get the baker's dozen of donuts. Yeah. And it starts off okay. You got like buttermilk or old fashioned, but at some point it's ones with orange frosting yep. and red, white, and blue jimmies. And I'm I'm like, <laughs> what are we doing here, people? And they're like, Well, we're just I'm getting one of everything. I know you got blueberry, you got you got the blueberry bagel. That's not a bagel. It doesn't taste like a bagel. It's like I got cinnamon raisin bagel. That does the absolutely. Not. <laughs> what not, are we doing here? What are we doing here? So yeah. they go, Well, what we're doing here is I got Two egg bagels, and then I got two salt bagels, and then I got two persimmon bagels, and then I got two banana bagels. It's like, don't do it. Just don't get the stupid. How? Why is the visual component so great to people? Or how come people haven't even figured out donuts? I'm talking to adult males who don't know their fucking way around a donut. If you want to see the colors of the rainbow, do an Asiago with like jalapeno. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> Bring in some variety with the cream cheese. Yes. There you go. Yeah. You could do a little sweet. You could do a little strawberry. You know what I mean? You do a mixed veg. Why, yeah, what are we doing with the, would you say, persimmons bagel? I, I don't know. <laughs> Just get a yeah. bunch of the stuff that tastes good. I, I'll do, if, if, I could do an hour on the veggie pizza, guys. I could do yeah. an hour on the veggie sub ones. Like, just fucking knock the fuck off. I, I get so stressed out, especially like in a production setting. I am the kind of person, if we go to dinner, some people sometimes call me like a restaurant bully. Because if I'm, ho- I'm Southern, right? So if I'm hosting you, or if we go somewhere, I'm just going to order everything. And people get so overwhelmed. Like, I'm the person who orders too much food every time but my sheer panic as like a southern woman is that you there will not be enough and mm-hmm. we'll have to bring the waiter back over and order more like right. i really that 
that's like a thing that I got to work through. I start itching, thinking that we don't have enough. So I would have, if you came to a production line, I would have enough savory bagels to mm. tickle your taint. I got savory you. Savory bagels. I got you. What do you think of this? My gay up? porn name, by yeah. the way. <laughs> uh, so a friend of mine, when he would go on first dates, he would order for him and the girl just one of every appetizer. And that was it. Don't, don't even look at the menu. We'll just take one of every appetizer. He called it the wheel. Some menus don't have a lot of appetizers. So Do, would these weird. women stay on these dates, or would they be like, what the fuck? It worked. He said it was a great move. It always worked. And I, I agree. I love appetizers. I will still order every appetizer, but we're going to at least split two entrees, and, and I'm going to order every <laughs> side. Like, if I go to a steakhouse, yes, I love the steak. I'm a meat eater. But I want the cream spinach, the potatoes layonnaise, oh, the yeah. loaded baked potato. I want the button mushrooms. we got to get dinner with you. I want the wedge salad. Oh, I want the, the seafood wedge. tower. I want it all. The steak is just an accessory to all the sides. <laughs> I was I I took a girl on a date once, did the opposite of what your friend did, but I was fucking poor. You know, I had to really like save up to right. go to a decent restaurant. I actually my coolest thing is I knew a guy named Ron, gay guy. Everybody knows a gay Ron. Yeah. Gay Ron restaurant tour had a cool, trendy, hot West LA restaurant. And I would just go in there, and I worked for Ron. I built him furniture. I built his boyfriend a bed. I built him a bed. I, I built this guy's furniture. And I'd work at this place. I think it was called Muse. Anyway, I'd go work there, make booze and shit, you know, restaurant shit. And uh, I would go in there and put in a full day's work, and then I'd go, I'm going to show up here with some chick tonight, <laughs> and everything's calm. And he'd be like, right. yep. That's nice how move. we do it. And it's like, hey, your money's no good here, Mr. Corolla. Oh, that's cool. You know, oh, that's good hot. Move. Yeah. yeah. And, but conversely, I went out with a girl. I was desperate and poor. And she was attractive, but she was hairy. Okay. What do you mean? Had hair on her. Arm. Lots of hair. Everywhere. Seemed like it. Yeah. Okay. And did you know this before the date or was, did she like take off a, you know, a jacket? And it was said, starting. Oh, okay. It was starting to dawn on me, but. Uh, <laughs> did she, she have was, a mustache? <laughs> facial hair? It was a dude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he picked Figured me up in his El Camino. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she was like a beauty queen mm -hmm. and she was attractive and stuff, but I, I wasn't attracted to her. All right. Even though I was desperate and poor. Did, did you do the sex with her? Still? No, I didn't want to do it. Like okay. I was just, it was enough. We made out or whatever. I got, I got enough hair in there. So, but we did go, we did go to a pizza. I went to Hyatt. You know, back when they had those gourmet pizza places, I know they uh, still yeah. do, but they were like a nice restaurant. We were ordering a pizza. She ordered a pizza and I was like, that's all the money I've made all week, you know? Mm -hmm. And and by the way, this is pizza and you're skinny and you ain't going to eat that much. I'm taking this shit home. Mm -hmm. I already figured it out. And then she ordered clams. On her pizza, oh, oh. just clam, not not even smoked oysters or anything, just like a clam pizza. Clams, clam yeah. pizza is delicious. What are you talking about? Oh, a clam, clam pizza is yes, delicious. It's a very like New York, Connecticut thing. Clam I've pizza. I've never heard of it. Wait, are yeah, what have you guys been living under a rock? I clam pizza. I are you hairy? Uh, am I hairy? <laughs> I mean, I probably I don't know. I haven't looked at my bush in a minute, but no. I mean, <laughs> everything else is smooth. Okay. But what Keep do you going. mean? I love a clam pizza. You it's a love a clam pizza? Yes, it's delicious. It has thick chunks of garlic. It's to die for. They don't even have an option. Listen, here of sometimes clam everybody in LA needs to venture out a little bit. I've okay? never heard of a clam pizza. <laughs> you then you've been living under a rock. Clam pizza is one of the most <laughs> delicious Italian things you could ever have. Really? Do you like anchovies? Love I, anchovies. I, I like. I love, but you got to be. Bearing with them. Like, they're good with a Caesar salad. So you get it in the Caesar. But have you ever had a, a pizza with anchovies on it? I don't. I'm not an anchovy pizza okay. guy. All right. But wrong? for you to turn your nose up on the clam pizza. I did. It's delicious. <laughs> Never even heard of ordering clams on a pizza. In L.A., for sure. It's not a thing, I guess, here. It's a big Northeast thing. Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah it's still absolutely delicious. Well, you guys do. Are, are the clams breaded or or are they just these are just like raw clams was kind of my problem no i think i mean i think they're cooked and then they put <laughs> it on like baked or something yeah. yeah yeah now are you an oyster guy like do you like i love a seafood tower you give me a clam you oh, give yeah. me a clam strip you give I'm me right an oysters rockefeller oh a i net? never got oh. i never got the oyster thing because i never got the part where people explain how to eat it where you swallow it essentially 
Okay. They like go, it, you just kind of put some Tabasco and some lemon and, then, yeah. and you just sort of drink it down. And I was like, I chew it a little bit. I feel you like chew, it well, felt, that Now you're the Zodiac oh, killer. I, I, like, what are not, you you're about? not supposed to chew the oyster a little bit? No. But, but Guys, aren't you what, just shotgunning oysters? What's happening here? I'm concerned about the state of the world. Well, how can you eat the oyster if you just swallow it? That's just what you do. Okay, first of all, this is a perfect oyster setup. You take the oyster, you put a little mignonette. And I judge a place on their mignonette sauce, which is like a kind of vinegar-based thing. Okay. Put that on. I do two dollops of some sort of hot sauce. I like a Tabasco. A little bit of cocktail. I don't even need the cracker. And you just wolf it back. And you let all the little all the little flavors run down your throat. And you have a glass of champagne or a dirty martini. I like what it says about a woman who does that. Listen, yeah. tell you that. I'll tell you right that now. Like. I'll take you to dinner. I'll be a restaurant bully. I'll eat all the oysters. And if then I'll I blow see, you afterwards. So. If I see a tongue stud and someone shooting oysters, Good I sign. know the night's going to end. A tongue stud. Yeah. <laughs> that's open for business. Uh, there you How go. hairy she is. And then shooting the oysters, that's next level. What is your biggest like turn off? Like, uh, like sh- right out the gate? Uh, in a, in a, and, in a, and a lady. Or a man. I, I was always... Very like kind of aesthetically driven, yeah. even though I had oh, no business that. being, I was poor. I drove a pickup truck mm-hmm. and my thing is I will wait. I, I will go two years without a girlfriend and then I'll date a hot chick for a while okay. and then I'll go another two years, but I can't just date in, in, in my tax bracket mm-hmm. a- aesthetically. Okay. So I would just have super long dry spells. All right. And 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 then I'd bag a hottie. Good for you. Yeah, I had lots of hot girlfriends, but they were spread out like over the course of you know, years. Okay. Mine is like immediately, and I've dated guys that were way below, way <laughs> like, but I mean, women do that, right? Women tend to. That's what the girl, the hot chicks yeah, did with me. Yeah. Um, but my big thing is it's alarming to me the amount of grown adults who don't realize the tartar buildup in their teeth. <laughs> like if I meet you immediately and I realize we haven't hit a floss and I'm not saying you got to be, yeah. you know, OCD about it, but the amount <laughs> of people who are living their day to day life and haven't hit the lower gums in a minute is alarming. Mm. Alarming. That's mm. a big thing. Because then I'm like, you're not taking enough time just to just to hit it with a gentle mm. rinse. You mm. know, it says a lot about you. Yeah, it does. It yeah. does. It says a lot about you. I mean, I like. I've always liked big hairy guys. I identify as a lumber sexual. I like to. <laughs> I like a guy who has ch- hairy chest. I never understood smooth guys. If that's your thing, great. But mm. I like a hairy chest, and I mm. like shoulders and a nice facial hair. And I want to, you know, yes. If I could fantasize that you can chop down wood, great. <laughs> you you like hair on the shoulders? It doesn't bother me. All right. It really doesn't. How about ass hair? Every guy kind of has ass hair. Now, my husband has a really hot ass because he did hockey, but you know, and he keeps things very tame. But when I first met him, he had shaved his chest and I, he took a shirt off. I go, What the fuck is this? He's like, <laughs> Italian from New York. I go, I just thought this is what you like. I go, No, no, no. Oh, Throw that Italian, in. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. no, no, no. Hey, man, I like a hairy man. Lean into it. Lean into it. Yeah. Lean in. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the guys who like me, it's my husband who's Italian and then like only black dudes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> which is, you know, I mean, I love like when a black guy hits on me, it's very specific, you know? Yeah. Like they're like, girl, I'm going to tickle your toes and make you spaghetti. And you're like, that sounds like a very nice evening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, what are the I black accept. guys attracted to with you, you think? I think it's um, probably my presence a little bit. Mm, you know, because you think about see that. Yeah, what'd right. you say? You're buying presents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just got this guy Cadillac. Yeah, yeah. And I was gonna fuck me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's no, an no, iPod. <laughs> I think. Well, listen, a lot of white guys don't like you know, or would be intimidated by a female stand up, right? Mm-hmm. My husband just thinks it's the greatest thing in the world. I mean, he sits back and he's like, "This is great. Well, I love you're, watching." Are you out him. earning him? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, good. Oh, I yeah. know. Oh, fuck that. What? That stresses I, you out? No, I hate, oh. I hate, I get labeled all, you know, you, um, your guys are too insecure to be with a woman. It's like, I would fucking love to be yeah, with a woman that outheard me. I, you would be, so I would So my husband feels you. the same way, and he supported me, obviously, through my comedy career as I was, like, hustling and doing the damn thing. But it is so funny, like, he's on a golf course right now relaxing. He's like, <sighs> yes. don't do it, toots, you got it. And so he cool. is my absolute, like, rock. But it is so funny when these guys get upset, when they're like, oh, how do you feel? Are you insecure because your wife makes more money? Good for me, you know? He's like, no, I'm supporting her 100%. All right. well, I have a theory. Okay, hit me with the theory. And it may go over as well as my clams on a pizza theory. Okay. But Are you afraid he's going to divorce me now because I make more money? No. I 
I, we broke it down on the show several months ago. Okay. Which is guys always had that. You know, it, was always, it was like a why an urban myth that guys were too insecure if their woman made so much more money than them. And mm-hmm. I was talking to Dr. Drew mm-hmm. about this and I was like, where's this come from? Because I would fucking love it right. if my partner made much more than me. It, it, but first off, it'd be a sense of relief. Like, right. okay, I don't have to be responsible for for running out every weekend and grabbing, you know, sack of money and coming home with it. Like right. just the idea that's like, go handle the bills. You know what yeah, I mean? Like I'll, right. I'll be watching sports center. So then here's my theory. And you tell me and tell okay. me if it works this way in your, in, in your home life. <laughs> I think the reason that people think men would be too insecure with that is that if a woman made all of the money and the man and, and, and the man made none of the money, which is the exact reverse of mm-hmm. my last relationship. Um, I think women would start calling the shots a little more. I think it, when it came time for a vacation and he wanted to go to Mexico and you wanted to go to Maui, yeah. you'd go, who's buying the tickets? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's natural. Like uh, I, It's a natural thing. Now, you can't, I love to do, pull it that, the, you can't do it the other way. No. I, I can't make all the money and then say to my woman, hey, bitch. I right. fucking brought home the bacon. Now we're going to Maui right. or vice versa. You can't yeah. do that, but does it crop up? I mean, and I don't even think it needs to be spoken. It's just <laughs> understood oh, when you're ordering at the restaurant, you kind of, he wants the lay and potatoes and you want the baked potato. You're, but again, I over order. So I'm like, everybody get everything. You're buying, you're, you're paying for everything. Yeah, you he, win. Does your husband want to kill himself if he goes to Italy one more time? I mean, you guys go every year. No, because we're both Italians. So no, are you kidding me? That's our happy but does place. It, does it, does, does it, it get old creep, no. Does it creep in the fact that you are making all the money in terms of you want to go out, you want to go out to dinner and a movie. You mm-hmm. know, he wants this food, you want that food, he wants to see this movie, you want to say, but you're paying. I would do that with you. If we were together yeah. and you're going, "Hun, I'm in the middle. I'm in the mood for one of my famous clam pizzas tonight." <laughs> I'd go, "Sounds great, hun." Let me get your back. But here's the thing. Does it matter regardless who is making more money? There is always going to be a fight with women and men about what we want to eat, right? So my <laughs> husband's thing is like, I'll tell him. When I'm on the road, I say, that we have a healthy marriage because I say it's like a partnership, right? He took care, of Mary, took care of me for the longest time and supported me. And now I'm like, listen, sit back and enjoy yourself for a little bit. Do this little semi-retirement thing. Cool. I'm in my prime, right? And it's really not threatening to either of us. But I always say, I did come home one day and I was annoyed because nothing had been done. There wasn't any help in the house. And I, I don't expect him to have a role where he's like oh. doing laundry and all this shit. But uh, I said, all right, if the role yeah. was reversed and I was a tennis wife and I was playing tennis all day and then you also came home from, you know, doing whatever you're doing, doing sales on the road and then there still was no food, there still was not a clean house and I didn't do my wifely duties, that we'd have a problem. I, so we really look at it as a partnership. I'm like, this is a business. We're partners in a business, right? No, I know. When you're out busting your fucking hump, yeah. especially on the road, yeah. and you come home and someone is wearing sweatpants with a bathrobe over it. Yeah. And, and there's like, no I'm, clean sheets on the bed. It's like, I didn't know how to run the, the and machine. Then you go you're to like, the, I'll fucking kill you. You go to the refrigerator and you're like, we're out of eggs? Yeah. And you're like, what the? Mm-hmm. It immediately hits. If you, But I'm saying... If a, if a man says to a woman, I am bringing home the money, you go out and get those eggs and clean uh-huh. this, whatever, he will be a pariah. <laughs> uh, he will. Yeah. Society yeah. will not Thank accept that. that. But a woman could definitely do that to a man. And maybe that's why men say we wouldn't be comfortable mm. because we'd be your bitch. Yeah, but also sometimes in the bedroom, you like to be a bitch. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although I don't. I actually like to be dominated because I feel like in my day-to-day world, I am constantly like calling the shots, running the show. And when you're on stage, I always say that like for 90 minutes a night when I'm doing my show, that's when I am the most respected. And then as soon as I walk (laughs) off stage, it's my husband being like, what do you want for dinner? Or my mom being like, what are we doing? What's happening? So I enjoy that. That's why I stay on the road because I'm like, that's my moment. And then when I'm home, I'm just a regular family gal. Like I'm doing the thing. Do you? you think your husband like i talked to my ex-wife about this once coming off the road like it's one of those things where you leave philly yeah you're in the fucking it's raining outside mike august he he, he used to wake up call instead of his phone <laughs> you know you, you're flying back against the time so right. you roll you walk through the front door at noon you've been up for thir- you've been traveling for like 13 hours i would say I swear to God, just 
be standing up, like pushing a broom, like yeah, move, oh, like laying oh, on top oh. of the bed. I, it's like it's it's demoralizing. It's like I, I literally. <laughs> and then we'll say they'll go, oh, so you want me just to stand up and pretend like I'm pushing a and mop said, or yes, something? I go, yes, yes, yeah, just, just <laughs> physically, yeah, be, be dressed a little bit, just standing. I, I said that once to my husband. I said, I know you're going to play golf, but I have a full day of work, right? And again, he can do whatever he wants. I know you're going to play golf. Lie to me. I said, <laughs> lie to me. Just say, but even say, I'm going to go play golf later. I got to go to the bank and figure something out. Mm-hmm. Say, I got to go to the bank and figure yeah. something out. Right. And then I'll be like, great, you get, you figure out that financial thing. <laughs> you do that. Or I got to call the accountant. I got to figure out this tax shit. I just lie to me. Lie to me. If men were smarter, they would lie about things I, more. Listen. <laughs> lie to me. Well, look, let me give you the whatever version of that was. Yeah. Anyone who's worked a, a blue collar job who's had a uh, who's had a boss, a foreman or whatever, like when I used to work and I worked in construction, at some point, it was pretty rare, but the, the foreman would go like, I'm going to Anna Walt Lumber and picking up that drywall and they'd leave in their truck. And yeah. second they turn the corner and went They're around things off. like and manually just sit down. Uh, like, yeah. oh fuck. Ah, we get to sit for a change. But you can't sit too long because mm-hmm. he, you're hanging drywall and he's going to come home, mm-hmm. going to come back to the job site because you guys didn't hang a sheet of drywall. So you, right. you sit, but you like sit there and then at some point you go, oh, he's coming around. He's coming back mm-hmm. now. Get up. Just get, Aaron, up. <laughs> get up. Fucking put some fake Cotton, sweat on it. Yeah. Take take some sawdust and throw it in your face, you know. Look right. a little beleaguered. Look alive. Just look alive. Look, look, look busy. And I always sort of felt that way. Like it was like symbolic. I, I just want to see, does Lighten your me. husband do it? Like would, would he, when he sees you're coming in, yes. does he stand up <laughs> Actually, and th- get dressed? This is great. We built this golf simulator in one of the bays in our garage. Cool. And it is so funny because he'll have his AirPods in so he can't really hear me. And he like mm. video records himself and sends it to his, his golf coach. And there'll be days where I'll be pulling up and he has a garage open and he will literally like... <laughs> <laughs> kind of look panic for Good. a second. I want him scared. Yeah, and, I'll, and I, it's our joke. I'm like, honey, why do you look so scared? He's like, I, you just creeped up on me there. I'm like, how many hours have you been in this? Right. right. And listen, I was do at the thing. bank first. Yeah, I went to the bank. I, I, yeah. And he always looks scared. He looks like he got caught doing something, and he's just fucking working on his it. swing. Okay. Yeah. You could take one of those Swiffer mop things and not even put the pad on it. Yeah. Just have you it be the plastic put part. Put it around your head. And just yeah. be pushing it around. On <laughs> yeah. You can do it on carpet. Yeah. I wouldn't care. I just went up and mm-hmm. movement. Now, do you find when I come home from the road, I feel bad for my family. I apologize. The day before I leave, I'm a nasty cunt. And the day I come home, I am too. And I realize, like my dad used to do this when he would travel a lot and go on the road. It's just because I don't want to leave. Like I love what I do. I love going on the road. But there's something like the day, the morning I'm leaving, I'm kind of a nasty bitch. And I don't mean mm. to be. I'm just, it's like a little bit of anxiety of getting out the road. People don't realize the schlep on the road. Yeah. You know, where I'm not on a private jet flying back and forth, I'm having to fight everybody at the airport too and I every time I get to the airport I'm like hey I'm sorry I was a nasty bitch this no, morning no I'll tell you the worst part is when you worst. come off of that and you do that kind of thing mm-hmm. and then at some point you're sitting around with your significant other and they go like you in the mood for takeout and you go like you know let's get some Chinese takeout or something and then you order it and then they look at you like when are you picking it up and you're like I'm picking it up <laughs> I'm I'm leaving to go I was yeah. in Philly. I was in this Philly, morning. and then St. Louis, then Toronto, then Houston in three days. Right, yeah. <laughs> get in your golf cart and simulate <laughs> picking up my fucking dinner, bitch. No, Jeff's good. He knows to feed me. I mean, oh, I'm good. I'm easy. You just keep me fed, and that's the thing. When we talked about it, I was like, honey, if you if the role was reversed, you would come home. And there'd be food on the table, and he's like, then it clicked. Once I said business partnership, mm. how are we running this business together? Like as a marriage, he was like, okay, now nah, I get what you're saying. He's like, so in order for you to do your job you can't be hungry i'm like exactly and i was like and if you want sex you can't be hungry okay I got it. <laughs> literally like I, it just listen, works now he won me over when he was scared yeah. at, at the golf simulator just yeah. a little fear just a yeah. little fear being caught doing nothing fear. all day while you're out busting yeah. your hump because here's the thing women don't want to nag I know every guy thinks, oh, God, these women are nagging. We don't want to nag. Why do I intentionally want to be up your ass about shit? I don't. That is the bane of my existence. I don't I don't get a high from it. It doesn't, you know, I don't get horny from it. What are we doing? Just do what I ask. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. You know? Just do it. Just do Sound it. like a it's Nike easy. spot. It is. All right. <laughs> we'll take a break. Then we'll do some, we'll just do some news right after this. Hey. 
I don't know if you guys know, but it's See Better Drive Safer Month now at O'Reilly Auto Parts. They have put a spotlight on items to help you see the road more clearly. All month long, receive gift cards after rebate on select wiper blades and bulbs. If your wiper blades are streaking and smearing, well, they're worn out and they need to be replaced. But good news, you can get up to a $20 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with purchase of select wiper blades. Their professional parts people will install your new wiper blades and they'll do it for free. See the road better with new bulbs? Get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with the purchase of Sylvania Silver Star Ultra or select ZXE Twin Pack Bulbs. They'll even help you pick out the right bulb for your vehicle. Visit your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store for details. O Rewards members receive two times O Rewards points on select bulbs and up to four times points on cleaning supplies for your vehicle. Don't miss the See Better Drive Safer Month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or shop online at O'ReillyAuto.com. Heather McMahon is yeah. here. Special, very funny on Netflix. Uh, you can find that. Heather McMahon, son, I never had. And uh, podcast, absolutely not with Heather McMahon. You can check that out. Website, you go to uh, Heather. Uh, HeatherOnTour.com. Oh, why mm. do all the HTP slash 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 stuff? Do you need that? No. Well, you don't have to say that, no. I know, but why? We didn't, it got added? I don't know. Anyway. And just go to uh, heatherontour.com. Yeah, and also with she's a at, slash at the end. You don't have to do the slash. It, uh, Why do we do that then? I, it's, it's I will tend to want to say, "Oh, it's a copy paste." Uh, so, right, and then we'll um, knock it off because I'm going to say everything <laughs> that's on it. the website. So yeah. heatherontour.com, and then she's also at Pantages Theater this, oh, this weekend. Beautiful. Come on, yeah. What a show. What yeah. a beautiful theater. Yeah, I'm excited. Legendary. All right, I'm added a second show to the Rancho Mirage show the agua caliente casino show so first one sold but we added a second if you want to come out and say hi all right and that'll be december 16th right what do you got okay so we ne- we never talked about this yet but matthew perry found mm. dead in his la home on saturday yeah um his assistant found him in the hot tub emergency responder said he was unconscious in a standalone jacuzzi uh, the circumstances surrounding his death are being investigated by the LAPD and the uh, L.A. County Medical Examiner. An uh, autopsy has been conducted, but examiners are still awaiting the results of the toxicology report, which could take weeks to complete. But everybody in Hollywood is uh, mourning his loss. Yeah, I, four years old. Well, everyone loved Friends. Yeah, I mean, we get a little too connected to Friends. I mean, it shouldn't be as big a part of our life as it as it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a it's a sitcom, mm-hmm. which it was a good sitcom. But we shouldn't all have a bizarre, deep, deep and important connection with a sitcom. That's the way I am with Seinfeld, though. Uh-huh. I'm more, I was more of a Seinfeld girly myself. Yeah, it's usually either or. I mean, right? huge Matthew Perry fan. I mean, iconic. Chandler Bing is one of the most iconic characters from television. But yeah. I, when people always quote Friends, I can't connect to it. I'm always Seinfeld. Sure. You know? Yeah. I never met him, I don't think. I talked to Dr. Drew about, you know, the death. And so. Yeah, what do you say about it? He said he was sober for less than two years, and there's a real high likelihood of relapsing oftentimes when mm. you've been tried to get sober as many times, but he didn't know if he relapsed or not. He said that um, the drugs don't really, you know, you sort of do this thing where, oh, he put himself through so much and his heart just gave way. And he said, now, like he told me once many years ago, um, he told me that heroin wasn't really bad for you. It's the way you inject it and people get a lot of um, like infections, infections and, and yeah. stuff and it ruins your life and everything. But it, it's not, you know, hair, it's it's like people, oh, these fucking crazy bitches in California. It's like vaping, vaping, cigarette, nicotine, vaping. It's like nicotine is not bad for you. It's addictive, right? But it's not bad for you. It's it's inert. Nicotine is like caffeine. It's like is caffeine bad for you? No, it's, it's all just, the additives it, that are bad for you. It's all well. I thought with the, the vaping, cigarette, it's the popcorn lung. It's the water that you take in. No, that's no? that. Well, so that's the whole campaign. But cigarettes are bad for you because of the smoke in the cigarettes. Mm. Vaping is just water vapor and nicotine, which isn't bad for you. Mm. It's like saying. 
coffee is bad for you. Got it. And then it sort of speeds you up and you get kind of addicted to it. But he said that all the opioids that he was on for all those years, it's not like they do damage to to you. Okay. I mean, they ruin your life. And, yeah. and you'll get like a bowel obstruction and stuff because they'll back you up and stuff like that. And he had all that. But it's not like he did all the opioids and his heart just gave out. Mm-hmm. Like that's not what Drew's saying. But then I said, they also found some like COPD medication or something, which meant he had a lung issue. And then Drew went, oh, that could definitely be something with the heart and the COPD and yeah. whatever. I'm anyway. too nervous to do anything. Like, I mean, I was never, you know, I liked a, a drink and a party sig, but I am just too nervous to do anything these days. Because you just don't know what the fuck people, everything is just too strong. I hate to sound like an old lady, but. There's fentanyl and there's everything. There's fentanyl and everything. Yes. And I, I, it's just insane to me. I'm like anybody who's just pulling out drugs at a party i i hate to be the you know the loser in the corner but i'm not fucking doing it i don't trust anybody not worth it not worth it i I listen especially the old fentanyl thing it's like uh, i did just see a thing though that they said and i may have been on vice that the cartel has now come out and they were they literally had signs all over mexico saying like hey everybody we're not gonna put the fentanyl in the drugs anymore (laughs) because please consume (laughs) But yeah, but yeah, because they realize that they're killing off too many of their clients. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, everyone loved friends. Mm-hmm. And if they didn't, they had to say they loved friends. <laughs> and then it becomes, you know, it's like the band Radiohead. Like all the cool people had to pretend like they liked Radiohead. No one could say, I don't like Radiohead because then it would make you seem like a dick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you can't say like Phoebe's a bitch and Chandler's yeah. a douche. You know, you, you can everyone just cross the board. You have to have great. Great love for I, all things friends. I love that people come back and say how, like how problematic the show was, like how Courtney Cox's character Monica would like used to be fat, and that was her whole story. I'm like, that's fucking hysterical. Why yeah. can't we just have fat Monica? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why can't we just let that be what it was? Yeah, a lot of fat jokes with her. And you know what? I, I, I'm in it. You know, I'm in it. <laughs> I like Friends. Uh, I liked him. He was great in Friends. Everyone yeah. was great. Great cast. And um, and I know he was beloved amongst yeah. everybody in the cast. This is a yeah. this is a shocking death. Like the last time I felt like this shocked by death was probably Bob Saget. Yeah, and then mm. Norm before that. But just like what? Because you don't you, you don't expect it. He's he's like one of the youngest of the oh, cast. Oh, you know you know we got to do. I don't know what what clubs that I just get back from. Tacoma Comedy Club and Spokane Comedy Club. Yeah, they just call them that, right? That's yeah. Name. Uh, they are a chain, and they put up the dead comedians' pictures. And oh, yeah, yeah. I do not mind like the seeing, like, W.C. Fields up there. Mm-hmm. But when I'm walking off stage and Norm is just staring at me and Bob Saget are like right next to each other, it's I'm like, like first of all, those guys ages, number one. <laughs> they die. And number two, like, I'm friends with those guys. Like, this is bumming. I don't mind yeah. seeing Lucille Ball. Right. Uh, but you got, there's got to be a cool down period. A little reminder of Comedian mortality. dies. We got to give it a decade. Then the picture then goes we, up. On the side of the wall. Then the tribute, yeah. Yes, it, it's going up immediately. These guys are contemporaries. They're friends, and you're bumming me out. That's what I'm saying. My first apartment that I almost signed a lease on in L.A. was on Laurel, right? And and uh, it was right below the Laugh Factory. And I remember, so they have a law in California if you're going to buy any property or sign a lease, they have to tell you if there was a death in the property. So I'm literally going to sign the lease and the woman's like, what do you do again? I was like, oh, I'm a comedian. She's like, oh, yeah, I got. I have to let you know. Somebody died in the other room. She's like, yeah, and they did comedy. I said, up at the Laugh Factory. Oh, <laughs> and wow, I was right. like, so we're not going to be signing the lease on this apartment. This seems like a bad <laughs> Omen. You and want to talk about weird and bad news? The place with the clam pizzas was up <laughs> Laurel. I swear to God, it's a, if you go up Laurel from the comedy uh, from uh, Laugh Factory, you there's a little restaurant that's right in that's right in there. It's got a little Pache? mall, whatever. Pache? Yeah, yeah. It, uh, that gra- was great, the clam. Great clam pizza. Yeah, <laughs> no I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> they still doing gourmet pizzas there? Yes, oh, delicious. Oh, I did have dry truffles there one time. I got uh, suckered after I would uh, had a bottle of wine. They're like, the trick. you want the truffle? I said, these are wood chips. This is yeah, not right. an authentic truffle. <laughs> yes, yeah. there it was. You were just in Italy. Same this place. is not a truffle. This yeah. doesn't count. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, Matthew Perry will be missed. Yes. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's go into this one here. The Snow White movie has been delayed another year. 
Yeah. So the li- they Disney doing all these live action remakes. They just did Aladdin. They did Cinderella. They did Lion King. Well, now they're, they're, they've been working on Snow White. It's supposed to be released March of next year. It has now been delayed a full year, and they released a picture of of uh, a, a still from the movie, and it has been updated with CGI dwarves. Now, remember, there's a leaked photo where they had actors playing the dwarves, a very diverse crew of actors playing who weren't dwarves. No, they weren't dwarves. Like, they there's one full, of them was one of them was height. a little person. Um, and, uh, yeah, and you had a, you had a, they looked like vagabonds really it's just uh, yeah. following, following Snow White. But now the, the new still, they're all, they've all been CGI'd over. They, they went old school. They've, they've now, they've gone oh. back to the dwarf. They've gone so back. So everyone's tired of everyone remaking <sighs> everything with this sort of yeah. diversity. Yeah. And, you talked and about the re- pendulum swinging back. Now, I don't know where it's going. It's, well, I, I don't, I, yeah, I'm confused by this one. Now, were they originally going to change it because they thought, like, was there a stigma around the dwarfism? Right. Yeah, there was. Peter Dinklage went on a podcast saying that oh. this is a it's a whole fucked out premise anyway. Why are we having a, huh? all you know seven dwarves living in a cave um, with this with this princess? So well, they, so I, they did they went the other way, and now they're coming back because of the. I complaints. don't know. I you know what I think. There's too much of there's too much of identifying with whatever. Like, why does Peter Dinklage have to? relate to every fucking dwarf who cares <laughs> no, I, I, i'm six two hey uh who else is six two can we talk about something mm-hmm. i don't give a fuck about other guys are six two i always say my white privilege is not giving a fuck about white people you know what i mean <laughs> black people have to pretend that they're down with the cause and support and everything mm-hmm. i you know you know if you're an amputee like if you're missing yeah your i'm legs, gonna i'm gonna you, go to an amputee barbecue and hang out right. with the other people no, with one saying, leg. Like you, like, what i'm saying is peter dinklage he he's he um, identifies with the other dwarves because it has hindered him from getting work. It has, it That's has true. affected oh, his career. Oh, if he was my height, I don't think we'd know his name. <laughs> I, well, well, I, I'm going to make an yeah, argument. It's got more that roles. Be true. Because, yeah. well, he's, he's done okay for himself. Right. You know? So I think Dinklage has probably gotten more work mm. because really, now at the beginning, it's got to be slow. But at a certain point, you just want to recognize the person. Like you, mm-hmm. like Dinklage is more recognizable because he's a small person than many, many other actors. But I'm not, here's my whole point. Here's, here's how this has to work. Uh, fuck off, Disney, and all your woke <laughs> bullshit. And yes, uh, Bud Light, give the USC a, a UFC $100 million and try to do a little less he shing and a little more fucking wheel kicks and submission holds because that's your audience. Stop trying to beat us over the head with your fucking woke culture and everything. You're allowed to remake things. Um, I think you should remake them as they were. And if you would like roles for more women and more dwarves and more diversity or whatever, then come up with new stories that are their story. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you just go and we're just regurgitating the same old Yeah, shit. I'll get back to Jada and Will, but you just, you just go, Oh, we're going to remake the karate kid with the black kid. Make a new, make a new franchise. I hear what And then saying. have a franchise for your black superhero and for, I mean, it's, it's happening more, but I'm saying don't just reboot shit and then recast it. This is a story. It's told, it was told a certain way. I get it. Stop with the revisionist history and make new projects and new vehicles right. for your for, that will fulfill your diversity quest. Well, why do you think everybody's mad at this now? Because this is kind of like them going, "Hey, we're no longer uh, super woke. We're going back to the dwarves." Everybody, who's mad at them now, though? Well, I, oh, well now the people who wanted the, divi- the, the Fuck diverse that dwarves. Crew, like, Look at just how creepy and old they are. That's what's to yeah. me the creepiest part. We're not going to yeah. talk about sweet sleeping beauty around these like seven old dudes who are just lurking on her. And are that's they, the creepy part to me. Are they even seven dwarves? Maybe their average height in their world. Maybe she's the outlier. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like maybe they're Hobbit, whatever, or Ewoks or something. <laughs> like Ewoks <laughs> aren't dwarves. They're Ewoks. Nerding. I don't even remember the story. What happened? She was sleeping. Then the dwarves wake her up. And then what happens? She the poison apple. There's yeah, a poison she's, apple somewhere. She's, she's, I wasn't really a Disney kid. I was watching like Ricky Lake and Sally Jesse Raphael. You know what I mean? Mm. I didn't. I never watched Sle- Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella. Maybe once, and then I wanted to watch like the Real World. You know, and know what was going on. Is Sally Jesse alive? I don't know actually. 
With the iconic red glasses? I'm trying to think. Like, she would be at the leader of my board of, like, if you said to me, I'll give you a million dollars if you tell me she's dead or alive, I'd go. I have the answer. Oh, God. Is she alive? Did I hear she she's died alive. a few years ago? Yeah. Uh, COVID fucked me up. Yeah. Born in 1935. She is 88 years old. Oh, good, for, good her. for her. You, know you what? go, girl. You go, girl. I'm dying to meet Judge Judy. My mom looks a lot like Judge Judy, but I am dying to be on the back of the yacht with the one and only iconic Judge Judy. She does look like Judge Judy. She's in the beginning yeah. of your special. Yeah. By the way, yeah. she's a great, great actress. Yes. I was very impressed by her acting chops. But I've created a monster because now I'm shooting the next special and she's already like, so what am I doing in the special? I'm like, mom, <laughs> please. I'm going to figure out a way to put you in, but let me just have my moment. Where are you shooting it? Um, in Atlanta at the Fox Theater. So oh. hometown. Yeah. Judge Judy is Crazy rich. Too. Crazy rich. Oh, she's always on unreal. a boat. She has a banging bod. She's like so, in such great shape. She's so funny. I Judge Judy, if you hear this, please, I would love to go to lunch with you and pick your brain. I and order everything. Yeah. 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 Judge Judy Judy has a banging bod. Oh, look at but Google bikini photo, Judge Judy on her yacht. You're gonna be like smoke show. All right. Let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> next story. No, because I was it's not gonna be able to take care of his appointed rounds. All right, well, speaking of uh, Georgia, there is a restaurant in Georgia that is under fire. Yeah. Yeah, apparently for um, charging parents a service fee for having unruly children. It's the Tacoa Riverside Restaurant, and it lists on its menu a, uh, this, this surcharge saying, adults unable to parent will be charged money, and he's actually done it. He's, he's added a $50 charge to parents who... Good. Here's my thing. If it, this is... In Tacoa Falls, what part of Georgia is this in? Does it say? Uh, I know it's in Tacoa. So, Rivers, Tacoa. Oh, t- let me, let me if, find if out. If it is by a river, I would, and I owned that restaurant, I would too be like, we're not in charge of making sure your kids don't fall in this water. Right. I will try, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure they've had an incident where these kids are running around, nobody's paying attention, mom and dad are drinking, and they're like, hey, your kid's floating down the river. We're not fucking dealing with this. Yeah. Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge, yeah. So it's on. It's up there in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Yeah, I good for them. Good, <laughs> good for them. I'm on board. I, I listen. There should be. I was just on a flight with a kid that was, you know, going nuts two rows behind me. I feel bad for the kids on flights, though. I do. I I feel bad for the parents. I should say, if it's a baby, their their yeah. ears are burning. They can't do anything. Like when people are are hard to people with babies, I feel bad. But yeah, if you've got a kid who can figure their shit out, give them an iPad. You know. What are we doing here? Yeah, you got to do some parenting. You got to do some parenting. And you have to pretend I, like you're a parent. And, yeah. and and you have to undo. Like I would always, I had a party house in the, in the San Fernando Valley here back in the day. And uh, I could always tell when my sister, my nephews were using the party house mm-hmm. because I would show up and there would be rocks in the swimming pool. Mm-hmm. And then I would say to my sister, uh, I think uh, I think the boys threw uh, rocks in the swimming pool, and she'd go, "Oh yeah, they did that." And I'd be like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." Well, what are you going to do about you it? You have to unrock the the pool, and mm-hmm. you have to get the skimmer thing. And the basketball hoop had a basketball court, and it was on a thing that you could lower it, right? Mm-hmm. And we played at ten foot, you know, regulation. But when it was wheeled down to four foot, I always knew they were there because they're mm-hmm. two years old, like playing basketball. And I was like, "Yeah, do whatever you want." But now undo it. Like right. when you're the parent, you know. Make it nice for me because this is my space. Let, let me get back to even. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. You don't have to make it anything. I just want to, I want to get back to even. I, I just feel that way about parenting. You know, you're at the restaurant, your kid's running around screaming. He's pissing off the old people. Right. You fucking handle. Well, here's some of the Google reviews from the, from the parents who are complaining. Oh, yeah, let's hear so this. They're, they're saying like, look, we had a table... 11 kids at the table, sure, with their four families, three to eight years old, but they're all watching an iPad. They were, we thought the owner was coming over to compliment us on how good our children were being, and he said, no, they're being too loud, $50. Another Per another, kid or just for oh, the table? For the, for the table. Okay. Mm-hmm. And another person said, I was rocking my baby. Mm. Wasn't making a ton of noise, but I was rocking the baby, and he came up and said, you, you shouldn't be uh, rocking a baby at a fine restaurant. $50. Oh, oh well, now well, this guy's so an this asshole. Guy, Fuck that. I mean, but these are, these are the parents' side of the story, so I don't know. Yeah. What, and let me ask this. I was just in an airport, speaking of kids, and I saw it yesterday, but the big nursing milking hut that looks yeah. like oh, a yeah. fucking- Those little pods? Looks like a bomb shelter. Yeah. It, On, yeah. It really does. And I'm like, how many capacity is that? It's like, one, you know, first off, I've never seen anyone walk in or walk out. 
It's using up valuable real estate. But does it have to be that size? And does it have to be impenetrable? Like fucking Hamas couldn't have gotten into <laughs> yes, that thing. Yes, if, it should be. So a woman can be in there and just breastfeed her baby. But lock I'm, the door. I'm saying pump, I'm, someone yeah. takes a crowbar to it. I'm saying. But listen, maybe it's big enough so we can throw all the babies in there. You know what yes. I mean? Like, let's. No, I think that's fantastic. It's too I am, big. I, no, shut the fuck up. It's Don't too, be an it's asshole. It's too no, fortified. No, it's I'm putting my foot down. Does it need it's to be bombproof? Yes, it should. It, it, could, it could take a 7.0 earthquake. Good. Like an I beam could land on that thing. Should let the, let the women in there. We could do with it a much out. smaller footprint, is what I'm saying, with easier IKEA like construction, not bomb shelters. No, that's all. I say, if I run for president, you know what? Let your titties out in the bomb shelters wherever you want. It's too you know big what? a unit. It, it, to make it fair, Adam, we should have those. Uh, you know how they have those outdoor urinals in Europe? We should have those yes. scattered around too. We could just pee with impunity. I agree. God, because you guys have so. We do. It's, you guys are we so have to oressed. Hold it. Yeah. Adam oh. almost missed his flight because yeah. he, he had to hold it. I had to pee. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Wow. You wow. get it. Then, you know, we should also have fee- free feminine products too in the bathroom. Well, we're tied yeah. already. That's yeah. we're too much, right? You got the lactation things. We got our outdoor urinals. We're you good. Got, you could just go in the pet service area and just piss on the fire <laughs> hydrant. That's I don't want to hear That's a great idea. Oh, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you just do that? You're animal. Anyways, <laughs> do they uh, do those those lactation zones? Do they have more than one bench? Like the women go in there. I've never in seen the groups? inside. I've never seen the inside. I'm I don't have check children. It out. I'm oh yeah, check you it should out. be the creep that knocks in. <laughs> Who's in there? Yeah, I dare. Yeah, good. Yeah, and then the next thing is gonna be Adam no, Carolla I'm, gets arrested oh. at Tacoma Airport. Oh, there you go. Look how nice that is. Seventh it's, generation it's is too big. Nice lighting. Seventh generation. Yeah, great, great, great dish soap. Here's the thing. I don't think. I mean, women do things. You know, obviously as a community, I don't think it would be weird if there was more than one woman in there. I think you just sit with your tit out and you're feeding your baby, talking about life. Why it, stop it, there? Why don't you get the steam going? Yeah, you know? why don't you pump a little steam? In why would you need some <laughs> steam in there? You're if already it's a communi- communal. It's thing. bigger than at any sauna I've ever seen at a Y. <laughs> it's too big. The footprint is too yes. big. It's not being utilized. It's using up too much space at the airport that's all you're already sweating if you're carrying your baby and you've already got something <laughs> latched to your titty i mean i breastfeed my husband enough mm-hmm. and i'm sweating my ass off let's see yeah. and look good for her oh those look nice that's that looks big. great very cool it's too you're such a dick get a movie going in there the, Is that projector the yeah. fucking uh, the lounge at alaska airlines wasn't as nice as this <laughs> it's too nice it's too nice. And it uses up too much space that's all and okay. it's too well it's over engineered <laughs> it's over engineered I mean, God knows what that's setting it back per unit, per airport. I mean, I'd say I could. Well, I would say the airport's not paying for it. Mama, whoever. whoever no, they, we're paying for it. We're that, we're no, all I think it's paying sponsored. For. I think it's sponsored mm-hmm. yeah. by whomever because they are always plastered like that. It other one was seventh yeah. generation, which is a nice cleaning product that, you can get at Target. That money gets passed along to the consumer and it goes right to your ticket. And if you're wondering <laughs> why airline travel is so expensive okay. these days, it's yeah. the <laughs> lactation centers. It's, lact- it's mothers feeding their children. But I will say this. <laughs> My time's up. I got to get out of here. I love this. If the shit goes down, I'm running in there because yeah. that shit is bulletproof. Mm-hmm. Bomb, you know, when the terrorists hit the airport, yeah. that's where I'm going. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. seek shelter, but let's uh, see if these I bitches gotta, let you I in. I got to toss a couple <laughs> bitches out to make room for my boys. <laughs> right, what is, uh, what's protocol though with, with breastfeeding? What do you mean? If one woman is in there and then there's two women in there. Mm-hmm. Could another woman come in and like sit down next to the one or should they give them a little space? Is there an issue there? Uh, I have been around my other girlfriends where we're all sitting around and they're all just breastfeeding together. I don't think that would be weird. But again, ask moms who are breastfeeding. Just because Mm. I have breasts doesn't mean that I know what the protocol is there. But I would imagine it's not weird for women to sit around and feed their children. It's very casual. It's Mm. very casual. I mean, have you been in a men's fucking... Uh, locker room y'all are just uh, literally at our country club my husband has said that there's this guy who's probably in his like late 60s and he'll sit on the leather couch the communal leather couch with his like dick and balls just yeah. not leather wrapped couch up couch too oh, not, yeah. exactly not wrapped up in the towel just dick and balls grundle on the leather couch and my husband says he can't tell if it's like a generational thing that all these older guys do yeah, this he's like do that. this is fucking bizarre I know we're making it, we're hitting the leather pretty hard, but a velour yeah. couch would be even worse. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. just to be fair to the guy with the grundle. <laughs> I think these things are so sturdily built 
that I could get into one of those lactation centers and go over Niagara Falls. If, <laughs> I if, do think. If you yeah. caulked in the door, if you took silicone caulk and just waterproofed the door, I think I could survive that. I yeah. think you could too. You could do Victoria Falls. Isn't that in South Africa? You yeah. could even bigger. You know I, what could I, mean? go bigger. I think I'm going to do bigger. it. If Wide World of Sports was still a so thing, we're both, we're both complimenting. Mind. We're all complimenting the construction of these absolutely these pods. Here. I just I'd like it's to see them nice. used a little more. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've never seen anyone leaving. I've never seen anyone knocking. There's no action. You know what I mean? Because mm, I that's what we need is women doing more action. Yeah. Well, listen. Uh, mm-hmm. Look, I'm going to be consistent. I I was screaming the other day on this show that I was at the Burbank Airport and they have that stupid Segway trike bike security thing, which is it just sits in the corner. It had mm-hmm. to set it, someone back twenty two thousand dollars. I've never seen a guy on it. Right. It's never charging. It just sits there with like the Burbank PD sticker on it, and I'm like, I want to see that thing used or moved, and I. Feel the same way. I'd like to see one of these chicks get on the Segway and ride it right in to the lactation center. If you really want to have, like, if you're having a hard time falling asleep and you want a real giggle, just Google. Get on the YouTubes. Segway fails. That is what brings me oh, more really? joy. Mm. Because anybody, the cops just look like such assholes. Right. Like, if you're a police, if you're an officer of the law and you roll up to me on a Segway, I'm already, like, not yeah. going to pay attention to you. <laughs> no, I'll barely do a you mountain bike. Like, Ma- the cops yeah, on oh, the mountain bikes don't even feel like cops. Abs- I need a horse. A rollerblade cop? Get out of here. Get what out. You doing? You <laughs> yeah. didn't even join the force. Yeah, yeah. this is a bamboozlement. Right. Yeah. All right. What but with else? Adam's thoughts on these lactation pods, you can give him. A, you can put in good word for him to co-host the Today Show. I'm sure. You know what? I think. <laughs> hey, Jenna and Hoda yeah. and anyone else whose name ends with an A, who's ever been associated with this show, <laughs> or a Lee, like anything like a Kelsey or <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Past yeah. The Vino. I'll I tell you what. Thoughts. When I run for president, you can definitely run my campaign because you got thoughts. Uh, you I know? got thoughts. <laughs> it's a big footprint. That's all for the mount. It's being used. That's all right. All. So uh, there's this Idaho woman who is suing her one-time fertility doctor. Mm. So what happened was, uh, so her daughter last year, um, she's old. She's like she's like 22 now. She took a 23 and Me DNA test and found out that she has 19 half siblings, and she oh, thought she was really? an only child. Oh. So they looked deeper into it, and they all connected it to this fertility doctor. Oh, this is a creepy story. Yeah, who said, look. Um, I I have we can we can get you pregnant. This person went to Yale. They you know just giving them like oh this per- like it, it's a real successful person, great genes, blah blah blah. And then they find out later, oh no, this guy's been using his own sperm to impregnate mm, us. Wow. Yeah. So the nine count suit is seeking fifteen thousand dollars in damages. For- I'm sorry. Uh, 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 way more. I know. I was really surprised by how low it was. As somebody who went through IVF and everything, I, if if I got pregnant and then turns out it was the doctor's sperm and not my husband's, are mm. you fucking kidding me? Mm. Or did what was the situation in this? So the well, lawsuit this could be a plus. Like maybe the kid would have that gene where he liked to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? So the Your loss- husband's on a golf simulator with the earbuds. I mean, my husband and I are both kind of like larger people with bigger heads. I do think that there's sometimes I'm like, listen, we've been going through IVF. I'm like, if it doesn't work, maybe we like genetically find somebody who's like a <laughs> little bit more petite. Because I'm also mm-hmm. not trying to carry like a 40 pound baby, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the lawsuit said, um, so the doctor told told Doreen, that's the woman's name, there was a Yale medical intern on site who was willing to be a sperm donor. He would provide fresh, never frozen semen. Mm. And the donor would be considered anonymous, and she agreed. Oh, okay, so mm. she was already getting a donor. Yeah, and now the woman is upset that, that it wasn't this intern; it was the doctor's semen. Mm. Oh, now mean, there's another loop in the story. He's what? got a PhD. I mean, he's a physician. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, you <laughs> got to graduate. You can't be a dumbo. I mean, that's not too shabby. Yeah. I wish my dad was a fucking doctor. There was a story, though, about these women who were all um, going to this one fertility clinic, and the guy ended up, apparently, when they were under, was like putting in his own semen to make the embryos. Like, really fucked up story. Hold on, when they were under? Yeah, so when you're getting your egg retrieval, like, he would, whatever he would do, he would either mix it with the. Um, his own semen because you can do like an IUI where you mix it and then throw it back in Mm -hmm. or I mean there's there's been some fucked up fertility shit yeah well as long as we're going there how about the cases you hear every once in a while where the woman who's in the coma gets pregnant that's what I'm saying fucking creepy yeah. When I was doing IVF, it was interesting. I became really close with the nurses. And I said, what's the craziest shit you see? They said, what we have a major problem is these older guys come in with these young wives. And they come in to give a semen sample. Well, they'll just spit in the cup. 
right? Because they don't want to have kids, but they don't have the balls to have the conversation with the young wife. Hey, I don't want to have any more kids. Mm. So, you know, HIPAA laws, they can't tell say anything. So they just say, we didn't get a, a correct oh, sample. Oh, they can't say, oh, because I got... We got what an I inconclusive is, result. I would do wow. what, what Drake does with the condom. I just put a shot a of tobacco, tobacco in, there. <laughs> in there and just ruin the load. You know Jeez. what I mean? So instead, they're going in and just spitting in these cups, and then the nurses basically have to cover the tracks and just be like, "We didn't. We got an inconclusive result." And then these nurses are like, "These pieces of shit. Like, fuck you. Like, just be have an honest conversation with." So, these have women. You, are you getting into this? Did your husband have to produce a sample? He did. Yes, and it's so funny when you're did doing. Did he have to do it on site? He did it on site. Uh, oh, and it's it's awful for the guys for because you I've can't. Done it. You got to do. It's got to be dry. You can't. And also, when you jerk off into the cup, you're like you're, the tip of your dick can't touch the the rim of the cup because oh. that can mess up the sample. Oh, so you're, you're you're raw dogging it, you know. And then it's you gotta, gotta like, gotta catch it in the air. <laughs> it's gotta be dry. It's, it's gotta be dry. Time. You can't use any lube. Oh, or your husband's a lube guy. Uh, well, but I mean, like, no, I'm just saying medically. Period. They say the rules are full dry rub. Can't touch the tip of the cup, so you're just jerking it in the corner and trying to catch wow. it. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm more of a Kansas City barbecue guy oh. than a dry rub. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like the finger licking, you know? There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, look, first thing, I would l tell any young man on his, you know, 13th or 14th birthday, th this lube it's mm -hmm. a it's a fickle mistress. Okay, you don't want to be chasing that dragon your whole life. Got Just it. get used to the dry rub. <laughs> the world will right. be your oyster. Dry rub and black coffee. Yes, life it, be amazing. It, yeah. That's it, the saddest <laughs> name of a memoir I've ever heard. <laughs> and by the way, if you can squeeze one off standing up, good for you. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, you can go into one of those airport lactate stations <laughs> and rub up. one out. Well, you can't lock the door at the at the urinal. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you can. I will. I will bet you more guys have rubbed one out in one of those stations than have actually been utilized by nursing women. And it's the guys who love the pregnant yeah, woman. That, oh. he's gotta, he's gotta, yeah, are you into that fetish? Oh, he's Do you, gonna, I don't. I don't get the king. Not. I got my subscription to Milken and Pop. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, listen. Every yeah. once in a while, you'll come across some of that stuff, where she's squirting, and it's yeah. like, well, what the you fuck? Do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's got to be the dry rub. Okay, and yeah. you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta have decent aim. Mm hmm. And did he bring his own porn? Um, yeah, he watched something on his phone. I mean, they obviously have, you know, DVDs and magazines there. And he's Major. like, I'm not touching this shit that somebody else <laughs> yeah. has been flipping Especially through. Especially when I have 80,000 hours worth of porn yeah. on my phone. Like, we're know? good. The best is when you're, you have to go to these fertility clinics and do blood work like every couple of days, right? Because they're checking and saying how your hormones are changing and how the eggs are growing. And these guys will come in with their little samples, you know, to get tested in their little bags. And they look so insecure and they walk in there, you know, it's a big waiting room full of women. And the women are all on hormones and they're like, just put the fucking bag down. They're like, right. no one's looking at you, Mark. We don't care. Just put the bag down and get out of here. Mm. So I, there's, I love watching the men try and crawl into the fertility clinic. They all just hate every second of it. You got to be able to rub the one out standing up and dry. Yeah, yeah. That can, right. I think those that that criteria, dry and standing, can be can be tough. For Another some great dudes. thing you'd bring to my campaign. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about the future. Yeah, we should get a, a little poll here. Yeah, we the should. Pun, but <laughs> I, I can, I've always been dry. Okay. Because I, I, first off, I come from a poor family. <laughs> like, that was just one more fucking expense, you right. know? And then secondly, every guy I know is a lube guy burned himself with going with shampoo or something uh -huh. somewhere and burned his dick up with that stuff. Oof. So dry is, dry is the way to go. Okay. But standing up and dry, that's, uh, that can be, that's multitasking. That be, yeah, that can be a little difficult yeah. for some, yeah. some guys, you know? Well, I've learned something new. Do they allow a fluffer in that facility? Um, I did not go into fluff, but I mm -hmm. do think you can do a fluff situation, but I don't think you can put your mouth on it. So I think you're still just dry yeah. rubbing too, because again, oh. you're trying to get the cleanest it sample. Yeah. I think it's just got to be dry. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's got to be real dry. How far do you? How far are you guys from the facility? Uh, 30 minutes. Now, when you go into your initial, they, when they do the first initial sample, you're just doing it at home and then you, mm -hmm. you have to take it in warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
All right. I'm yeah. getting hungry. We, are, <laughs> we should wrap this up. All right. Uh, I'm going to be at Jimmy's Club in Vegas. Uh, that'll be Thursday coming up. And then Sacramento and then Fargo and then Nashville and Vegas again and Huntsville and all that kind of stuff. Heather McMahon, well, she's taking the world by storm. You oh, can yeah. watch her very funny special. It's on Netflix. Very well done. Son I Never Had. And it's called Son I Never Had, right? And uh, also live show Pantages Theater coming up uh, this Saturday. Congratulations on playing such a great venue. And uh, absolutely not with Heather McMahon as well. Beautiful, uh, beautiful podcast. So listen to that. Until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Heather McMahon and Chris Max Pata saying mahalo. <laughs> <laughs>